Shall we start? Okay. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, um, welcome to uh, our friends, our students at AOM, uh, our colleagues, our uh, fellow students elsewhere, whether in Jordan and uh, outside Jordan. Today, I'm really, really very happy to have a close friend speaking to us. Um, and uh, actually, uh, as it happened, um, when two friends meet each other and work with each other, um, the, there is a kind of chemistry which allows them sometimes to break conventions. The way how they present themselves and the way how they share uh, whatever they like to share with with others. So uh, Sahel came up with the idea of uh, conducting today's uh, um, quote unquote uh, lecture in a way that is more engaging than we typically do when we have formal uh, lectures. Um, as a matter of fact, Sahel really, um, I mean, he he's goes without saying, and I hope my students, uh, our students will know him uh, better. Um, he's somebody you don't need to introduce. He already established his name as uh, one of the most architects in the region, not in, not in Jordan. And hopefully sometime soon he would be uh, one of those really um, global names, which uh, will do us great honor to have. And, and he, he will do it. We are sure of that. But um, the, the nice thing about Sahel is that he's not interested in all of this. This talk about, you know, mm. uh, popularity, you know, uh, establishing a brand. He, he's deep inside, uh, really, some, somebody deserves to be known. As I uh, came to know him. Um, so for me, the most important thing about Sahil is the story behind, as opposed to his uh, well-known uh, works, which he's going to talk about. Uh, don't, don't worry, he's going to talk about the uh, Harafa. But, but uh, for me, the real work that uh, deserves to be shared, and we are perhaps privileged to have this, as opposed to other platforms where uh, he shared his work, Recently, he had his work. Uh, he had a, he made an important lecture in Harvard. He did a couple of them earlier, and they, they saw the, his interesting work. Um, we are fortunate to see what's more important than this. And uh, really, um, I would like you to see what I saw uh, my, uh, during our friendship, uh, which uh, with him, which extended many, many, many years ago, I mean, more than fifteen years. We start, uh, we work together, we talk together, and at one juncture, we really learn together. Uh, to, uh, uh, for those who were listening to our informal chat before the lecture, he said something which I would really like to pick on and continue um, uh, our uh, discussion with him. Because he really wants to, today, he wants to have a discussion more than a one way uh, lecture. A discussion which is really between uh, seekers of knowledge, between friends. So uh, he said, um, um, we're talking about one of uh, the people uh, working in his office. He happened to be a former student. And he said something very uh, important about him, which really gives you an insight about how Sahel operates. And he said that this, this person uh, he, he employed him and he uh, kept him in, in, his, uh, work, uh, in his work with him throughout this year because he had something spiritual about him. Um, he is an apprentice, somebody who really comes, to, uh, he does not come to work uh, just to, uh, you know, earn a living or build a portfolio as much that he's coming really to live. For him, work is a lifestyle, is a dedication, just like the, uh, 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 the traditional apprenticeship. 
and uh, the apprenticeship comes really from a, a spiritual guild or order. This used to be, you know, the model of uh, uh, learning, teaching that we really lost, and uh, which are only these days found in certain crafts and spiritual orders. So perhaps I, I will begin uh, with Sahil, with sharing with, with you a story, because Sahil today is going to share stories, and we are going, going to learn from him, from his great stories. Uh, a story, I don't know if he remembers, which shows you this, what, what do I mean by apprenticeship? I remember, maybe I don't know, it reminds Sahil, maybe 14, 15 years ago, uh, I was teaching at the University of Jordan, and um, in the afternoon, I, after I finished my lecture, I phoned Sahil. And I told him, Sahil, um, I'm going now to Damascus to uh, um, have, quote unquote, you know, a spiritual session with my, my spiritual teacher in, and a Sufi teacher in Damascus. Do you, do you like to join in? And said, of course, yeah, sure. So we, at, at, at a short notice, we found ourselves taking this uh, uh, taxi, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, old uh, American uh, uh, cars, you know, this huge, they're no longer manufactured them. I think it was Dodge, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the yellow, yellow cab. So we took, we took this taxi and in the afternoon and we ended up in Damascus where we had a meditation session with our teacher and we, ha we had a, a, a lesson. So um, I will leave it now to Sahil. I don't know if you remember this event. I don't, I, I don't know what did you make of it and how you can connect it uh, I, I, with, <laughs> with the rest of your stories. I, I, I really... Uh, yeah. Uh, Sheikh Bashir, Allah he was uh, he was really truly a special person. And what what one of the things that really struck me in, during his lesson is that he went to a restaurant. He used to go to a restaurant and every time ask the waiter for cutlery in glass. He wanted his cutlery to be in glass. And of course, every time he asked for the cutlery in glass, the the waiter would not. <laughs> We would not have glass cut cutlery, and he would tell him, we don't have glass cutlery. Mm -hmm. And he kept on every day asking him the same question in the hope that one day there would be uh, uh, somebody would listen. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of mantra of, uh, of a question would, would, would materialize into reality. And in a sense, really, this was one of the biggest lessons I took from that, is that um, if, if something seems impossible, all you need to do is, is, is try it again and again and again and again, incessantly. And in, a, in, a, in almost a meditative mantra-like state of, state of mind. And I think this is, this is what we all do as architects. I think I'm not the only one doing this, but I think we always try to answer one question or we, 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 we kind of... Uh, explore one aspect, and through this aspect, it, it, it has, has multiple, multiple folds of, of forms and of meanings and of uh, possibilities. So uh, this is what I got from, from Sheikh Bashir, Allah irhamu, and I, can't, I will not forget that he, 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 he gave me a, a very nice uh, uh, greeting saying, uh, 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 that I will be happy during my life and happy in the in the nether life as well. And I, I thought that was a very nice thing of him to say. And then that was it. We never, I never was able to see him again. But probably that is the. <laughs> this is how it was meant to be. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but uh, t today, yes, I do want this to be in the, in the form of a discussion. I have selected a few projects. Unfortunately, a lot of our files are in the office. Before the lockdown, we were able to get out some of it. So I, I collected the ones that uh, I already have. And so we can, uh, we can work with that. And we can see the trajectory of thought that goes in, from one project to another. 
And uh, today, you know, I, I gave, I normally don't give uh, uh, titles uh, to, to lectures, n normally because I find, it, I find that it uh, kind of puts the work in a specific uh, framework uh, and it forces one to read the work from a specific perspective or a, form or a framework, whether intellectual or theoretical or otherwise. And I find this also in turn what it does that it, it makes one also, um, uh, if this becomes a habit, it makes one try to uh, find the, these themes before uh, allowing the project to materialize on its own. So it becomes, the work becomes forced. But today I, 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 I found this title because basically it, when I look at what I have been doing, it is exactly that. It is uh, 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 work that, uh, that has to do with memory. And what I mean by memory is not my personal memory, but a collective memory, a collective memory, a global memory, let's say, um, that, that deals with the present, the present as in the present tense of the, of, 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 you know, the present as, as the, the in terms of time. Um, with, with everything it, it contains, even its histories and even its archaeologies and even its uh, cultures and, and, and so on and so forth. So, um, so the best way I think to start is to talk about one of the first important, you know, important projects. I believe this is a very important project in Jordan. It's a clinical psychologist workspace. And it's, uh, it's uh, 100 square meters. It's, uh, it was done in the 90s. I can't remember exactly when, maybe 1999 or 2000, something like that, 20 years ago. And basically, it's a tiny um, um, addition to, to a building that was uh, built originally from the 1920s. And it's a prototypical uh, first circle uh, building that has uh, um, uh, a, a courtyard or a side garden that, that buffers uh, the main entry from the street. And it has one main space in section. Uh, it's a tall space. And then it has a small kitchen, a bathroom, and an upper floor, basically, a uh, small upper floor, which is more like an attic space, really. My impression the first time I visited the, the, the building is that I, I really liked it. I liked it the way it is. Uh, it, it reminded me actually of a cathedral um, simply because of um, the vertical aspect of the space. You know, it had this vertical aspect. The windows, there was a window as well, which was high. And I remember when I walked in, the sun was coming in in a certain way. And it really felt like uh, uh, as if I'm in the presence of this... Uh, uh, grand uh, kind of cathedral, and uh, th th that uh, that was my personal. Honestly, this is a personal thing. I've never talked about this before, but you know that was um, uh, what instigated the project and the development of the project later on. Um, basically, uh, also I found this so appropriate for for the whole idea of a clinical psychologist, which is a place where you go and you kind of spill your 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 guts to the person and the person is standing there mirroring you or kind of uh, 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 asking uh, pointed questions or, uh, you know, it's the clinic, the, the nature of clinical psychology is, is therapy. And it's, it's really about kind of um, uh, this idea of almost confession as well. So my first focus really was on the interior space. The most important thing about it was the interior space to me. And like a cathedral, what I try to do is to emphasize and, and, and uh, exaggerate the verticality by placing a series of panels, uh, tall panels uh, out of wood uh, that would close and open, that could contain uh, certain functions like shelves in this case, that would uh, uh, also um, allow the space to be either entirely opened or closed. Um, what I did was very basic, and I've kept uh, uh, the tiles, original tiles. They were from the 50s, I believe, and then I cast everything else in concrete. And then that's the other part where we, I designed a little bed, you know, and, uh, and another vertical window to that garden. 
And then again, here you have this idea, idea of uh, being able to cocoon yourself in this space uh, or open it and control the quality of light inside. But one of the most important things was the budget of the project. We had absolutely no budget. I mean, the whole thing was done for around 7,000 JDs, which was to renovate the inside and the outside, change the bathrooms, put a kitchen, etc. do all of that. So we had to, you know, I had to uh, come up with certain ideas that would uh, uh, also address the budget and address the reality of the project. And, uh, and so if you... If you see, uh, the finishes of the project everywhere are quite basic. And, uh, the, you know, really the investment would be in, in, in kind of renovating windows, uh, enlarging them, for example, as, in we have, as we have in this attic space, making a built-in uh, bed, creating shelves, but all done with rudimentary materials and, uh, and materials that are really... Uh, um, uh, harmonious with its original nature. I did not want to give it a, a new character, actually. I just wanted to give it another layer, but another layer of itself, basically. So um, in that sense, also we went ahead and we created even fixtures made out of uh, uh, stone. We looked at, uh, uh, you know, to buy a toilet that was more expensive than to actually carve one but that, that kind of magic only happens in Jordan, or it only happened in Jordan at the time. And, 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 and the same thing with the sink, uh, sinks, and uh, even the lighting fixtures were industrial tubes. So it, it, it was this idea of, uh, uh, of the entire project of doing the renovation and creating product design as well for it uh, and for the client. Um, um, the exterior of the project, um, we, I, I, it was completely torn down, completely run down the, 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 the exterior, the, the plastering. It was painted several times and it was starting to fall. The plastering was falling off. But I kind of like this, this the whole uh, idea of uh, uh, the, the, the deterioration of, of material and to, to, to kind of, I wanted to kind of re-propose that, but in a new way. So we've mixed in this case uh, for the plaster, uh, we put like steel particles that I collected from the uh, workshops in, uh, in the industrial areas and we mixed it with the thing. So it, it, it started to oxidize and with time, the, the, the character of the building started to change according to um, to the weather and according to time and according to the exposure to the water and the moisture. So it started to, to create a, 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 a kind of a choreographed, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, patina for the project. Also, uh, in Jabal Amman, uh, uh, my client, of course, did not want to uh, maintain the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the security bars, enforcement bars that they put in front of the windows uh, because that gave off uh, 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 the wrong signal for her clients. So basically what we've done is a system of sliding panels that, uh, that you can lock and padlock when you leave and open it like you open a shop like, or a garage door when you're, when you're using the space. And this allowed the client not to have the space uh, entirely uh, uh, barred in and to have that uh, uh, feeling of being imprisoned inside the space. So this is, this is what happens. Again, you know, the doors, the, uh, all the detailing, the, 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 the box that was uh, for, the, for the intercom basically was all done in, um, in steel. And, uh, and so that's basically the, the, sorry, somebody was saying something? No, okay. And, uh, and so again, you know, this is a particular of the, of the screen. Of, of course, this is here, it's referring to the famous um, Eileen Gray partitions that she's done, which are wonderful and I loved so much. And so I thought, you know, why not? We do an Eileen Gray looking uh, uh, or uh, an interpretation of that. 
and uh, uh, we did that. So that's that's the first project. Uh, the the most important thing I think about this the the the, the, the this typology of spaces is that little garden that they have in front, and the possibility of opening the front entirely to the to, to the inside through uh, through the windows created a sense of openness and connection to the outdoor, uh, although the space was entirely, uh, uh, extremely small in terms of dimension. And so um, th this was the first project. It was very important, I have to say, because it was probably my first project uh, that I had done. It was the first renovation or the second project. The first project was probably a room for the same client, but in another building. It was one room. And uh, based on this project, I remember uh, Allah Yerhamo, Ali Maher passed by with Suha Uskan at the time um, uh, to show him what I had done. I was still working on it. And, and Suha, Suha Uskan actually nominated me. Based on what he saw, he nominated me uh, for the uh, Rolex Mentor and Protege Arts Initiative. So this is how it really started. This is how I got the nomination and this is how I got to uh, spend the mentorship year with Alvaro Cesar. So it was at, right at the beginning of my career. Um, do you have questions or would you like to, can we move on or? No, no, move on, move on, you know, this is. Uh, okay. um, but, but, uh, 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 if I would like to say something that, you know, this work is still accessible. Yani, people. Yes, it's, yes, still, it's still, they're still using it. The, the client likes it uh, very much. I, I think one of the most, um, one of the key factors for sustainability is that you have a client that is very happy with the space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that allows the, 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 a certain level of maintenance to continue, you know? And so this gives your uh, project uh, a certain type of longevity. And so I think this is real sustainability. It's not only in terms of energy and cost and, you know, the, 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 uh, the environmental impact it has. It ha also has other factors such as, you know, um, use mm -hmm. and taking care of something and not to get into this uh, uh, no. terrible uh, uh, habit here, which is the... the, the the, the culture of the disposable, where you do a house and then, you know, you live in it and you completely ruin it and then you build a better one and then you leave it and, you, you know, people tend to do that. But anyway, so, yeah. Yes, uh, we have way, but, oh, sorry. But, but by the way, uh, this, this house or this, uh, this particular work is located off uh, Rainbow Street. When you go to, ja to Jara, you can easily uh, pass, pass mm -hmm. by. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a question, uh, if you don't mind. Um, I live very close to this um, space, and um, it was never made aware to me that this space exists. Uh, I wanted to ask if that was part of the concept, because it was very enclosed. And I also wanted to ask if there was any feedbacks from the clients in this center, because it's a very um, sort of different typology to therapy, you know, bringing this, you know, the, the domesticity in a sort of a, a more public setting rather than a house, if that was accomplished, if that was any part of your thought process while designing this? Well, yeah, uh, to answer the first question, as I said, I, um, I didn't really want to change the nature of so much. I mean, yes, obviously it's changed with the steel uh, structure and so on. But it's not clad in stone or marble or, you know, it's not, and, you know, with a Luca Bond sign outside <laughs> saying clinical psychologist. It remains somehow uh, kind of an anonymous, but somehow um, uh, uh, distinguished building. So it, it has a certain subtlety to it, which I wanted to maintain and a certain uh, respect also to the nature of Jabal Amman, you know, and uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of important structures, but there are also in front of it, especially there is the Bilbaisi uh, Palace, but there are also a lot of buildings, very humble buildings like that, 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 that are also wonderful because they make 
this neutral fabric of the city. So I wanted to maintain that. As in terms of the the feedback, the feedback was was very very good because I the the the, the first of all um, the 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 person who works there still works there. It's been almost 20 years and she's still happy with it and and uh, she used to tell me at the time at the beginning the the type of feedback they were uh, uh, she was getting and uh, so uh, yeah it, it was it was well received it is well received yeah. did i answer your question or did i miss uh, yeah. something no 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 uh, okay. that's fine. thank you you're welcome so if we will fast forward now, if there are no more questions, I can fast forward to a project we did, uh, was it last year? Yeah. And it's a desert uh, resort competition in Al Ula in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's a very large project of around 12,000 uh, square meters. And uh, it's in a spectacular uh, 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 setting of the desert, very similar, of course, to our Wadi Ram. And it's, of course, they're extensions of one another, you know. And uh, its proximity, its location to um, uh, Madain Saleh, of course, is a, is a very important thing. So, so um, to, do, to do one of the most difficult things about working in the desert is that if you draw a line in this landscape, it becomes so evident immediately. And if you try to kind of camouflage the buildings in, uh, in, within the landscape, it's, it's, to me, is even worse. Because what it does is that um, it creates a synthetic kind of simulacrum of, of a landscape that has formed over centuries and millennia, basically. And in one go, you know, we come and uh, try to kind of uh, uh, simulate it. So. Uh, my approach for the project was to take the program. The program consisted of various uh, uh, um, elements. And, uh, and the approach was to take the, the, the program and disperse it over the landscape in, 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 in the form of various fragments that uh, kind of construct a certain narrative. And the narrative they construct is something that belongs to the place and to the region in general, and to the history or the histories of the uh, of the location. And so, if we start, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Can you see my cursor? Probably not. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, okay. We, we see, okay. Okay. So, so uh, there is the way they've subdivided the program, and it's important to talk, talk about the program because it's it's really what makes the various pieces is that they, they, um, there is a service part, of course, that has to be resolved. And so that was uh, placed, we can talk about it. There were diagrams, unfortunately, we don't have the diagrams, but there are service areas, for example, I'll start even with the most uh, important thing, which is where the staff actually lives, uh, which we really located in, in this particular location. The resort itself is this zone. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and the entry of the resort is through here, which is a natural, naturally occurring uh, location. It's it 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 is uh, very close to a depression in the landscape, which collects water normally. So this is most mostly like a clay pan, uh, which we find a lot of that also in Wadi Ram. There are other ones like here, for example. If you see this flat area, this is where the water uh, collects. And uh, what we did was take the, 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 the arrival area or the arrival lobby is here. And then from the arrival lobby, lobby there was, uh, of course, that also contains uh, other programs such as uh, uh, meeting rooms and uh, kind of a business center and so on. And then from that part, what we did was to create two, uh, to create some kind of a, uh, a, a circulatory uh, element that crosses uh, and takes advantage of the uh, landscape and allows the circulation of both goods or service and uh, of the um, of the clients 
to run parallel and but to be divided basically by uh, uh, by the landscape we bermed we created uh, natural uh, uh, um, uh, saturations that allowed uh, the movement of the staff to be separate from the it runs parallel but it remains separate from uh, the movement of the thing uh, and and then we have uh, a, a space here the central part which is the most important part is the suites. We have, they asked for individual villas. They wanted also a spa for both men and women. They asked for um, uh, a, tent, a tented uh, guest pavilion and, uh, and villas that would later on uh, be uh, uh, sold individually. Uh, that would also uh, be part of the project, but it's it's something for sale basically. So 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 this is the master plan of the of the uh, thing. The concept basically was to create this uh, 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 fragments that recall and kind of summon the energies that we found in Al Ula. And one of the most important things is is of Al Ula basically is the oasis. So what we've tried to do in terms of uh, 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 the landscape is to create this intervention of an oasis, is to cultivate the area and to locate the villas within the, uh, uh, within the, within this body of green that allows the villa sort of to disappear. What this does is it mit mitigates the effect of having a lot of objects in the, uh, um, in the landscape. And it, it allows the other pieces to somehow uh, read as those fragments that have a very distinct architectural character uh, that stand in, in stark contrast to the uh, to the landscape. And so, if we go to the to the arrival lobby, what we've done is a, a space that is um, whose uh, in, in th that's the entire floor plan. Of course, the arrival is through here. The guests can come through here, and then they move forward to the and to and through the project but what we've done is that we minimize the part that was visible of the project uh, we, and we we created sort of a vaulted space and that would have been the visible part and then the rest of the uh, the program was embedded in sand burns so basically we've buried a lot of the program to kind of create a smaller uh, footprint uh, for, for, for uh, or a smaller building uh, in, in, in the landscape. Of course, you know, one of the most important Kharrani uh, Qa'al palace, basically, I, I, it's one of my, I, one of my favorite structures, really, because it's this idea of uh, also standing in stark contrast to the nature, is to, to have a, a completely precise geometry in that landscape and not to try to hide this idea uh, uh, of, uh, of making something visible. So in this case, what we've done is we've taken this idea and we made one part which is visible, which is the, uh, the arrival lobby, but then it embeds itself in this almost dam of, 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 of sand that, that embeds more program within. And that creates the gate, the entry gate of the uh, of the whole resort. Uh, the arrival, of course, is through this road and it turns around and, uh, and the landscape in this part remains extremely, it's like a xeriscape landscape. It's, it's just done with the types of rocks, uh, almost like a Richard Long sculpture that extends to create the front garden of, 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 of uh, this building. Uh, what we try to do also is to think about the construction technique for this. And the construction technique would have been consolidated, um, it's consolidated stone and sand. And um, uh, the idea would have been to uh, create those uh, precast elements that fit together like a puzzle and that allows, to use the material, allows us to use the material of the site. And therefore, by doing so, it allows the building itself to, to, to kind of uh, extend the materiality of the landscape itself. So it, is, uh, it, it, is, it, it, it kind of plays between this idea of pure geometry and 
yet extending this or kind of camouflaging itself in the landscape through color and texture and so on. The, the space itself, the interior, the space itself um, cracks, the ceilings of the space crack. So they fit together like a puzzle, but they are not entirely, uh, the dimensions uh, allow for these fissures to, to allow for the fissures, for fissures to, uh, uh, um, to, to, to filter light into the space. And this important, this is so important for me, this idea of light, the contrast of actually being in, because there's an abundance of light in the desert. And the idea was to come to a space where at, immediately you are, uh, it, it, it creates a rupture in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the atmosphere light. So here things become dimmer, become more cave-like, become more, uh, it's more of a protective space. From that space, um, uh, we can go to the other, uh, uh, the guest suites. Uh, and again, I'm really sorry, I don't have the diagrams. There's a lot of diagrams that explain that. But we, what we did in this uh, space is this circular structure and uh, that, that, that has a central garden in the middle uh, and that uh, is, is accessed from the back. And it has a, a kind of a, a very wide uh, a portico, a shaded portico. And then you have the units that come, they, are, they, are, they come, they, 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 they are combined, they're different combinations of different types and uh, of, of duplexes of two or three bedrooms. These are again, are really large. They're almost, they're not hotel rooms, but they're really more like apartments that they sell like suites, very large suites that uh, they sell in different uh, combinations. Uh, the, the system, of course, has uh, uh, certain uh, breaks that allow the, the, the visitors to exit and go directly into the landscape. And the way we've resolved the, uh, the services, it, that it, we raised the entry level um, to, to, to the first floor, and then the ground floor becomes which I don't have the plan of, but the, it, in the section, it's this part that's it's served from below. So each apartment really has a service stair that, that uh, allows the staff to immediately access for cleaning and so on without uh, necessarily uh, uh, crossing paths with the people who are uh, in, within that complex. Uh, basically, the the facade of the uh, of the structure is a ventilated facade so it has each space has a balcony and it has it's it's, a, it's quite a large balcony and then uh, we will see the facades it consists again of these uh, um, pre uh, precast elements that are stacked on top of one another but the reference of this building actually comes from the agropastoral uh, late neolithic enclosures that dot the landscapes of uh, Saudi Arabia as well as in Jordan. These are the kite houses, the wheel houses, and so on. And I thought it would be very interesting to, um, to bring into play uh, those reference that, that actually summons the memories of these uh, structures because they are uh, uh, as, as, as forgotten and enigmatic somehow. And, uh, uh, and very relevant to that landscape. And so that main part is, is, represents one of those circles, let's say. Uh, what you see, again, is another structure that, uh, that uh, stands, again, in contrast to the landscape, but somehow it, uh, it, it, uh, it scripts on the textures of the rock behind it. And basically, this is achieved by means of the elements that stack on top of one another, and they create this kind of stone bracelet uh, that has no visible kind of glazing in it, because all the glass is recessed in the back. And so it's this very sculptural facade of, um, of uh, almost these uh, megaliths that, uh, create, that stack on top of one another, and they create shade and shadow, basically. The, uh, the, this is just a close-up of it, and uh, what you see here is the, uh, the entry, which comes through here into the space, 
and uh, this is how you access it, basically from the inside. Uh, the interior, the, another thing which we tried to do in this project was to kind of cancel this idea of interior design, and which is something we keep on pushing on, on clients, but we're not always successful in, in achieving. Because I, I, I kind of thought that um, uh, what would be interesting is to, to propose a system that resolves the interior qualities, it gives a certain interior quality and the exterior quality. So it is again, also it's again here uh, relating to this idea of, of, of the, the carved piece, uh, like, like the Nabatean remains, of course. It's the one materiality, it's the monomaterial that creates everything. And then, you know, so this was the, uh, uh, the idea of the interior with the floor, the ceiling, uh, and everything. It's all completely done with this almost Lego elements, very large scale Lego elements that fit and interlock uh, with one another. Also, this allows, allowed us to kind of uh, create a um, um, fabrication line, an ongoing fabrication line, on site, we would probably have the manufacturers of, of the uh, precast elements on site using the material of the site. So it doesn't really need a lot of formwork. It needs uh, 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 kind of uh, less management in terms of uh, uh, creating or building in a more conventional way. Uh, then we... Uh, of course, we, uh, there was a series of restaurants and clubhouses, and we were asked to come up with interesting ways to entertain the, uh, the, um, the, the clients. And I think one of the most important things was this idea of allowing the visitor also to get different vantage points of the landscape. Uh, uh, and so we decided to... Um, uh, devise or design a, a vertical structure, which is a multi, it's a thin building attached or almost touching the rock. Uh, and it has various, it's almost like a pergola, a vertical pergola that allows, uh, allows various uh, functions to happen. So you can have a cafe there, an informal musical event with fire within this uh, structure. And what it does, it gives you a viewing tower or a platform for the surrounding landscape, which is really spectacular. So this was an important piece of the project. And again, this was a reference to uh, uh, the, 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 the idea of, of the facade juxtaposed to or made out of the rock. In this case, we don't touch the rock. We actually build in front of it. But the connection is clear. And... Uh, of course, here the, 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 the design uh, consists of a stacking of columns that, again, this, the idea of stacking occurs here again, but here this, the, the, the stacking occurs vertically in terms of uh, columns uh, uh, being... Um, uh, the, the columns basically reduce in size as they go, so you get a much... Uh, thinner and uh, ephemeral almost uh, top to a very, very strong base, which is a very classical also uh, 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 element of the, of the architecture of uh, Ula and the Nabatean facades. And then surrounding it, basically, you would have uh, also within the same language, the restaurants, the clubhouses, and that goes into uh, the rock uh, from this side towards the swimming pools, which are in the crevices of the mountains and, and so on. So this was another element of the project. Of course, the connection of this is to, it's through this uh, long passageway that I talked about, which would have, uh, which would be shaded by trees or which would be shaded by uh, light structures along, dotted along the way. One of the things that, that was important was to, um, allow the if you're going in the desert it's the idea is to be outside and to walk and to circulate uh, this is this part is probably the most complex part but because it has a bit of a, a a planning part of it what you see here is the different types of villas 
they asked for different sizes. And the dots, of course, represent the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the plantation of the palm tree, of course, we uh, looked at uh, flood irrigation systems to, to, to irrigate this area. And what we've done, what there was basically is uh, there are these double um, corridors that allow the services, again, to appear within double walls uh, that completely conceal the... Uh, um, the, 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 the movement of, of, of uh, uh, the staff, and it, it circulates around them, and then it goes in tunnels and comes up from different parts. So it's, it's an intricate system uh, that happens above ground and below ground as well. Uh, the central part of it is a public space which has tennis courts, basketball courts, you know, there's a, probably a public pool, and, uh, and then this basically steps up because the level, it, it steps up the hill uh, uh, towards, uh, towards the back to this side. And then from here, you go to another part of the, uh, another lodge, basically, which is the, um, the tented pavilion uh, lodge. What really instigated this idea, basically, is the early Islamic, <laughs> the early Islamic mosque, which was in a, it was a structure uh, from, from the literature that I've read, and I, I can't give you specific quotations, that it was made out of palm tree trunks, and it was in, an, in, a, in a garden of some sort. And so we, we, we tried to, uh, to kind of bring this memory also, and also combine it with, with the more ag agrarian um, uh, structures that you find dotted in Saudi Arabia and in the Gulf region in general. They call it Al-Arish or Barasti in, in, in the Gulf. And, uh, and so what the, the, the main compositional element in this is the palm tree trunk. And what we've done basically was to create, a, I don't know if you see the plan, but it's all dotted, every, all, most of the, the partitions and most of the structure and the facade consists of palm trees that have been cut and uh, they create a structural system to hold a very thin roof and to, to, uh, for, for this pavilions, for these pavilion or villas that are, that are in the garden. So here it again comes up, it goes, gives you this idea, it goes back to this idea of the primitive hut, but done kind of in, uh, in, um, uh, in, a, in a culturally specific way or in a, in, a, in, in a way that is specific to the environment of Saudi Arabia. And so uh, in this case, this is one of the villas. Of course, they're luxury villas. So the, the expression here is, uh, is one of repetition and one of various densities of palm trees uh, the, the trunks, so it allows either entries or it becomes a filter for light uh, to the interior. Some parts become more open, other parts become more closed, but, but, but mainly the house itself is, uh, or the villa itself is permeable. Uh, and it's permeable in terms of the light uh, it has. And so it, the, the, the effect basically of, of those villas is that the structure somehow disappear in the landscape because they, uh, um, they kind of uh, duplicate the, the, the trunks of, uh, of the oasis itself. And so here is a front of view, and as you see, you almost cannot see the building, you only see an indication of the front entry and the pathway that leads you actually to the front entry. entry. The interior becomes uh, uh, an extremely simple space with these columns that go inside. And uh, of course, we started to employ other type of uh, um, material coming from, uh, which is this woven palm fronds to create partitions, to create uh, almost like curtains that allow you to um, uh, 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 screen off certain places, shade off certain places. And, but it, it, it has a certain introverted quality that deals with uh, 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 soft light. And that would have been the idea. Again, here, this is a view of one of the uh, uh, bedrooms that allow you sort of, sort of like um, 
the luxuries of the standard luxury of a of a hotel, but yet with an architecture that is uh, it's a little bit different. It's uh, more um, 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 more related to the landscape itself. Uh, the spa, the the, the spa, uh, the, the challenging part about the spa, and uh, I don't know if you recall, but it's it, it's in between, it's in a in a fissure or in a canyon, and it is actually uh, two uh, uh, two spas, one for men and one for women, and so they are placed one after the other. This is the one for uh, females, and then the one for men is right behind it, and the axis is from here. And what what it is, uh, it's that it's a it's it's a play in geometry of uh, uh, um, uh, a repeated module that creates spaces that creates different variety of uh, uh, of uh, um, various vari var variety of uh, spaces, allowing us to put the different parts of the program, and so. Um, you have an entry lobby, changing rooms, and then one of the uh, main spaces, there are three main spaces basically. There is one part which you have the treatment rooms, and inside here there is an area where, uh, you know, uh, we suggested that one of the treatments is to actually have bare, you know, a, a kind of, they call it earthing, and it's apparently very good for you, where you, uh, where your bare feet touch the ground, you're connected to the ground for the energy of the ground. These are the kind of new, we research the new therapies they're doing now in spas, in these fashionable spas. So we were researching uh, these things. There are yoga studios and so on. But what, what, what is interesting about all of this is that it, it, um, the, the, the spa itself, uh, in this case, this, these are one of the tombs, the circular tombs that you can, you can find. And again, here, the spas are, the spa is something which is extremely introverted with, uh, uh, with, with moments where you have kind of uh, uh, hidden water in, in the, uh, at the terminus of it. And these are like thermal pools that you, you, you go to towards the end with some kind of a bathhouse in front of it. So it combines kind of traditional and more contemporary types of, uh, of, uh, uh, of functions. But the architecture itself really is, is, is what is important about this, because what it does, it, 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 stands, at a, it stands at a crossroad between geometry and landscape, between, uh, uh, between an object that completely blends into the ground but becomes uh, uh, very distinct, uh, uh, towards the towards the top of it, and what happens in the facades is that the rocks at this point, the the base, um, it, it it would consist of uh, more rough uh, uh, stones that are uh, almost it's like a dry cladding, and then as it goes to the top, it's completely shaved and then uh, uh, actually stained white. Um, and, um, and, and so you have this thing that stands at the juncture between uh, uh, a, complete, uh, a complete disappearance in the landscape and then complete contrast. And so uh, this is the effect of, the, of this modular also uh, structure. And then that, the, the, the fact that there are two spas, uh, it was important for us to create something that is highly repetitive and that gives you this idea almost of, of a settlement uh, and, uh, and, a, and a desert settlement at that, and one which is completely closed, completely almost like a fortification, uh, recalling also the caravanserais in, in the deserts and the way they were uh, uh, closed objects, very uh, uh, protective and creating within inside much softer interiors this is the area where they do the grounding, where the, um, the space itself starts to, um, uh, uh, to create a certain uh, dome-like structure with uh, apertures that allow light to filter in and allow even small elements of landscaping, but very curated landscaping to occur in these areas. And, uh, and so this is this is that part, the interior. This is uh, also this is the pool at the end. Uh, 
here, you know, there is the memory of these, uh, I think in, in Uzbekistan, you find a lot of these uh, um, water um, reservoirs, you know, and they're usually located very close to the caravanserais. And this is where they used to, you go down, downstairs to them, and it's a pool of water uh, uh, collecting, collecting the rainwater. Uh, and it's for travelers, it's for uh, the, 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 the caravans that uh, used to cross the, the country. And so this is here a reference to that. It's, it's uh, a reference to that kind of desert architecture. Of course, the, the, there are perforations within the space that allow this filtered light to come in, and some, some apertures to see the landscape at least, and uh, so on. Um, this part is, um, they asked us for a tented guest pavilion. And of course, um, it's like, um, if, if you have any questions, please uh, interrupt me. I, I can answer them. Does anybody have questions or? I will speak at the end, at the end because we have a lot of questions. Okay. 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 At the end, I need to make a discussion, a dialogue. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay. This is uh, a tented... Uh, uh, but I, I cannot stop really uh, sharing my admiration of your drawings. You change your style here, this, this project. For this project, we've changed. We, we, we tried to impress them with beautiful drawings, but uh, yeah, we did, we did these, uh, these drawings also in, in this... Uh, we did the patina also. Really, the most important thing about this project is, 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 is its connection to history. And there is this kind of um, uh, um, a blatant connection to typologies and uh, to, 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 uh, to, to, and that's almost in a, in a very free way, kind of making references to the archaeology that's around without necessarily um, making it. Uh, uh, kind of too significant and trying to to have much more meaning than the reference itself. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. when this uh, is of, of, of subtlety, you know, this, uh, yes, it's a memory, and that's it is. Okay. It is like ah, it's a memory. You're summoning a memory, and you're trying to kind of present it in, a, in an almost a lyrical way or a poetic way, and um, and and then that that kind of lyrical way or poetic way allows you to kind of reconstruct your personal uh, understanding of the history or your personal understanding of that desert, right? So, or, and what it has, because, you know, for, for foreigners who don't know this, this area of the world, it's, they think it's an empty place and it's far from it, really. It's, it's, it's had thousands and thousands of years of human interaction, of culture, of cultural exchange as well, which is very important. I and mean, let's not forget that what the Nawatians are, you know, and, and how culturally uh, significant it was, th this whole idea of exchange. So, so, so again, here there's, there's a reference to the Bedouin cu culture. And then here, I, I, what we try to do really is to create one tent instead of creating uh, the regular uh, one very large tent that has a number of suites that are tented and this structure basically would be concrete, but, uh, but cast on a fabric form. So basically, this is not made out of fabric. The formwork is made out of fabric that allows you these bends. And then you have an entry, a central lobby, and the space, which is a big communal tent, and then all of the other tents that have a view, individual view. And then a little pool towards the end that they can dip in because they're kind of far away and they're separate on their own. Um, so, so basically, it is, it is that, really. It, if you see the section, that's exactly what we've done. But what we've done is insert buildings to the side and then create a space where everybody sits, and it's a tent. Um, so the effect of it is, is, is something embedded in the landscape and it's the same color, and it undulates in the same way um, you can uh, almost see uh, the, the behavior of the sand almost. It's like a sand dune that becomes uh, a building. Of course, here you have these fins that come out that create privacies for each room, and, uh, and so on. 
and then that's the central space, basically. I, I, have, I can tell you a personal anecdote about this. Actually, where this comes from, I discovered, is that once I was, uh, you know, my, my father, Allah irhamu, he we were driving and he saw a tent and he decided to go buy food because they, it, it, it seemed to be people of basic abject poverty. So we bought a, a carton of food and we went inside. And then we sat, and then when we sat, they offered the tea. They were so happy. They were really wonderful people. And he pointed to me. He told me, look at their tent. And I, I looked, and I said, it's a tent. What's wrong? Ali, it has so many holes. You know, a tent, if you live in a tent, it doesn't mean you live in a tent with holes. These people are very poor. So this is a tribute where we did the tent. And, and that memory, personal memory, came into the work, and I realized it really, really much later on. So uh, this is it. But it's a central space, the structural system. There's a, a, a structural system of, uh, of rods that are, of columns that are tied also with rope or uh, uh, clad with rope. And then you have on the side all of these uh, private entries for the spaces. Um, so... Um, then this is a, a residence here with that the next project it's a house that we've done in jordan it's a fairly large house it's a thousand square 260 square meters and it's in dabuq and this is the the area of the project and um, i really dislike tremendously tremendously uh, actually this is not the right uh, yes it is the right it's the right picture uh, to go back, I dislike tremendously working in Dabuq. I really do not like it at all, simply because there are all of these oak trees and it is slowly uh, becoming one of, uh, it's like the Shmeisani suburb or Abdun, and they're cutting all of these trees. And if you see here, they're, they're putting uh, palm trees and they're creating this mishmash of, uh, of uh, plant palettes that are really very destructive. I think. Um, and so, so the, the, lot of land, uh, the lot of land has these, uh, these are the four corners. What is very interesting about this is that, and, and very difficult at the same time, is that the topography uh, is, runs diagonally into the, into, runs diagonally in relationship to the morphology of the site itself. So what we did was to completely ignore the morphology of, uh, of the site itself, or the lot line itself, because we thought it was random and to really connect to the, um, to connect to the, uh, uh, the, the natural terrain itself. We were extremely lucky that in this zone, there were two trees, very small trees, that we were able to replant. Actually, we've, and then they've opened this road, we've, we were able to replant replant a lot of the trees. Uh, so, um, so basically, uh, um, uh, so basically, um, anyway, um, yeah, so, sorry, I, I lost my, because I got a message on the phone and I lost my, uh, <laughs> okay. So the, 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 the entry of the, 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 main, the main, we also had a, a difficulty in the, basically in the infrastructure because this road was not open. This very narrow road was open and this was open because there are buildings here. This was not open. And so, and the view is towards the, 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 the lower part of the land. And so basically the entry had to be from the upper part. Okay, and then, so what we tried to do in this case, was to create uh, um, uh, two volumes that are connected by uh, uh, an, that are connected basically by by a ceiling, by a bridge, and then a third volume which works as the main living spaces below. So what we did was we to create a sunken courtyard and an entry and direct access to the. Uh, the plans are probably too tiny, but the idea would have been to, to create direct access to the garden from every part of the house. 
This release you can see in the section. So the entry is here. And so this, on this level, you can connect to the sides, to the lateral sides. From the bottom level, which is a multi-purpose hall, you can collect, connect to the lower part of the landscape. From the top part, which is here, you have the garage and an entry as well. So each level of the house is actually a ground level, touching the ground in one, in one, one way or another. The entry, having the entry at the back of the house, we decided to completely close off all the windows and keep maintain all the windows to the front because the circulation paths, if we would go above, is, uh, is, um, uh, uh, would be the circulation paths to the bed, path to the bedroom would be towards the public area. And we did not want to, uh, in any, any form or manner, uh, uh, have it visible. And that will be seen, again, I apologize for not having enough drawings, but that will be seen in the drawing. But before I, I take it back, when I presented this project in Harvard, they were talking to me about, to, about um, uh, Frank, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright and how influenced this was by Frank Lloyd Wright. And actually, it's, it's, if you look at this, this is, uh, this is Nitla, it's in Oaxaca, it's in uh, Mexico. And it, it is, uh, uh, it's a pre-Columbian site, basically, that, uh, that, that really rings very, very, uh, uh, it, 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 it really looks like, a lot of it looks like uh, some of the work that Frank Lloyd Wright did. And in turn, it really connects to what I had done. This connection, actually, uh, I did not make at the beginning. I really discovered this temple, uh, or this palace, rather, much later, you know, and then I could see the connection there. And, um, and so now it's, it's, let's say it's an appropriated uh, reference that came later after the project. So if you, the, the project itself, what it does is it, it is, it, it reduces itself to a series of slabs that float in the landscape, that float in, in, in that float uh, on top of one another and float in the landscape. And there are these Planted terraces, basically. This, is, uh, this was the idea, is to have this expression of slabs with plants on top of them, and no expressions of windows. So the house itself, this is coming from the bottom part, uh, does not really reveal much of itself. It reveals this very strong massing. It reveals these monolithic pieces of concrete that uh, suspend themselves, and they float on top of one another with a series of planting terraces. Of course, here, uh, this is a landscape that was done beautifully by Lara Zreat. So, you know, she, uh, she did the landscape. And the idea really is here we are still at the beginning of the garden. And my idea would be to actually plant it more and have more greenery on the building to cover the building which is something that um, I guess many architects don't like to do, but I really like um, the idea of seeing architecture through landscapes. This is a very, very important thing to me. It, it softens a lot the, the, the architecture and it creates a, 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 an interesting dialogue be between the setting and, and the object itself. So uh, the, the material of the house is concrete, it's sanded concrete. And as you see here, even what we've done is that we followed the, the, the we cut the, la the, the uh, the wall, the, 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 the front wall of the house, according to the landscape itself. So here the walls kind of follow topography as well. And from this, from this piece, you can see basically this is this area that comes out. It's a balcony for, for, the, uh, for the kitchen. Above that, there's another balcony for this uh, bedroom. Uh, there is another window here. That's the main living space. That's below the connection to the uh, ground level. Uh, again, uh, if, you, if you look at it and you look at the Palace of Mitla, there is, there is a lot of uh, uh, similarities in terms of these uh, rectangular pieces that, uh, that, that create a pattern and create a certain facade. If you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. The material of the house is uh, sanded concrete. Uh, so, so um, the, the, and that's something I've been doing a lot, is to use concrete and then to bring the stonemasons to treat it as if it's stone. 
So, so, so in one of the projects, another project of mine, it's bush hammered by hand, and so it gives it this uh, rough texture, which is reminiscent to stone. Here, it's smooth, and it's kept, it, it's kept extremely simple, uh, as an extremely simple finish, and so on. These are the connections that you see to the, the house. There's a part that cantilevers and creates a courtyard, but that courtyard actually just happens through the beam that uh, suspends above. And in this area, there's a playroom for children. That's the entry of the house. Uh, perhaps that should have been at the beginning, but that's the entry of the house. And then you come down through, the, through a side stair to the sunken courtyard, that's the garage here, and then you come also through the garage to the main part of the house, and there is a large opening, almost an exaggerated atrium or a very big oculus in the, in the ceiling of this. And this is, as you come down, this is what you see. It's this integration of architectural elements with the rock. Of course, where we cut the rock to create the, to, to the sunken area was maintained natural, was kept in its raw form, in its excavated form. And this is the result, you get something like that. So the landscape comes into the house and then looking to the other side, that's the entry. And then to the right, you have a transparent entry that directly uh, you see through the house to the outside. So the, the, this whole expression of, of closure and of heaviness and of material weight completely breaks away in, 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 as you go through the house, it becomes much more open, much lighter, uh, you see, uh, much lighter, and you see even the landscape in the lab, you see the living rooms inside. That's the front door, it's a mirror that reflects the back, which reflects the, the stone that we've cut and the stairs. So you come through the mirror door, you go into the house, and then you see the landscape. Uh, again, this is an, these are the particulars. It becomes extremely sculptural at the, at the entry. And then the inside is, uh, um, is, is uh, you know, we would have liked more, more of the material to come in, but here we decided that uh, it's, it's, it's a more conventionally finished with marble and plaster and wooden cladding and so on. Um, we, the, the furniture and the selection of the furniture, even these panels where I collaborated with two product designers uh, from Lebanon, very talented young duo, their, their name is uh, David and Nicholas, they have very good taste, they worked very well with the client, and so that was a good collaboration. And this is the space really uh, that, uh, looking back at the entry as well. And then these are, the, these are the corridors that are closed. What we did is to create a skylight above the stair, above this area. So the quality of light in this space is, is, is quite interesting because it's lateral at times and it's vertical from other times and it, it just allows uh, 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 a very soft light uh, to, to be distributed within the, within the house. This is, for example, another skylight. Uh, that's the main staircase on the other part of the house. And that's the exterior. That's that there's a wooden deck, the pool, and then from the pool, you come down to the area of the playroom for the children. And uh, that takes us to, I think, that's the last project. Um, this is a work in progress, actually. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it... uh, Sahel, Sahel uh, can we pause a little here? Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, because I think a number of our students, they would, they would like to ask questions uh, relevant to the projects uh, that you just... Uh, okay. Uh, Jude? Please uh, go ahead. Good. Sorry, uh, I had some technical issues with my laptop. That's why I couldn't voice my questions at the time. Um, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, regarding uh, the Saudi project, mm -hmm. uh, the one in Saudi, yeah, I have three questions actually. Yes. 
هلا uh, where the different applications of materials يعني where they so as to segregate the zones according to functionality and uh, the second question was what what was the biggest challenge regarding this specific project was it the plantation and irrigation or the camouflage aspect or the light manipulation and lastly but not least uh, would you kind can, can we do them let's let me answer one and then yeah. ask another because i'm gonna forget them if you want me to <laughs> answer all of them sorry so no it's okay uh, the first thing I'd like to address, the, the most difficult part actually was the scale of the project vis-a-vis -vis the non-forgiving nature of the site because any mistake you do, in the, had this been in the Amazon, you do a mistake and then two months later, nature solves it for you. It is just hidden by trees. There is nothing that you can do if you do a line the line is very precise in that landscape. And so how do you put all of these elements together without making it look like an urban design project, you know, without making it lose the poetry, right? Of, uh, and, and so and, and the way you do this is by kind of creating very strong individual objects that, that contrast one another and that they have, they have a clear distinction to the landscape because I think that's my my approach is not to try to hide it too much, you know. Uh, uh, if, if, if you hide, you can hide it by means of using the material. But, but, but in terms of geometry, I think it's, 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 so, it's so interesting to have this kind of continuous soft landscape undulating mountains and to have, to insist kind of on the power of architecture and the power of geometry and typology and archaeology and, and all of these elements. So this, this, this was one of the things. The other thing is that mainly the material comes from the landscape. So in the other, for example, the spa was in stone and it was basically um, uh, 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 because it was more related to the surrounding mountains, right? And the other pieces, also each piece, had to do with where it was located. But mainly it's the same approach to material everywhere, even in the fabric uh, forms of uh, of the tent it had to do with the, the nature of, of 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 the question itself or the nature of the problem itself is that they wanted a tent so so how do you make a tent and also connect it to the landscape so you do you know you do uh, 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 some kind of a, a, a form work right and then you you the, the material itself is comes from the it, the sands or the aggregates come also from the, 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 the site. What were the other questions? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I answered them, but this is, that's the answer. Yes, yeah. you actually answered the first two, thank you. Uh, the last one was, uh, would you kindly elaborate more about the first picture of the project? Uh, the what? one, the first picture of the project, the one where you implemented light through cracks in the space. What would you like me to tell you? And what, what, what elaborate? It, it, it is it is a hallway, right? It's an arrival area. So so the typology already when you say a, a, an arrival, in 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 one's mind immediately it strikes this idea of a hall, a big hall, a big uh, ceremonial hall. So I try to reduce everything to that moment, to a moment, an expressive moment, and that's it. You know, and this is where the guest comes, arrives, takes the key. And then the rest is uh, the rest is toned down. The rest is business as usual, as they say. You know, you go to a corridor, you go to a car, and then you reach another uh, moment. So there is a there is there is there is a play of neutrality and event, neutrality and event happening. Uh, because if everything was an event, they cancel one another eventually, and it just becomes a vulgar display of. Uh, of, uh, of uh, muscle flexing. So it has to be, you know, we had moments that are uh, more silent than others, basically, yeah. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, may I have a question, Maha? Uh, yes, please. Okay. One second. Um, okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to start by saying that I really admire your uh, choice of interior uh, design for the resort in Saudi Arabia. 
mm. is I feel like a lot of a lot of resorts uh, resorts in desert locations try to I don't know like try to make it look like the resort is situated on a beach somewhere <laughs> like in Hayden Jamaica or something they forget that they forget the they forget the nature of the site location. So yeah. the fact that you yeah. chose that specific color theme for uh, your interior design was very amazing, very incredible, and I applaud you for that. Um, okay, so my question is, in terms of the resort, um, uh, 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 given the harsh environment of where the site location is, did the climate affect the resort in any harsh ways, for example, heat waves or uh, um, overlapping sand on the resort itself, uh, on the walkways specifically inside the windows, going inside the windows into the house. Yeah, yeah. Was there a lot of upkeep? In terms it's a of good. It's a good question. I think that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, when they selected the site, I think they had already studied wind movements and and also there is flash floods in the area really and so and and there are two or three locations where where there is risk of water so we were we were looking at that and we provided solution in our reports and so on um uh, of course not everything was resolved i cannot claim that everything was resolved but uh, the, the 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 in general the uh, the the the, the climatic issue uh, is as such. When you are in the desert, you cannot be expect, uh, uh, you, you cannot expect, don't expect the Arctic Circle. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're going to a resort in the desert, and I've been quite a few, it is almost always that uh, you have to adapt to the environment that you choose to visit. You cannot remain in a bubble, right? And, and expect people to remain in that bubble. And because if, we, if, you, if, you, if you want to do that, that becomes a project that is, A, schizophrenic. It doesn't, you know, it's, you know you, you're creating something that shouldn't probably belong there to begin with. Yeah, it clashes with the It clashes. So, so, so part of this thing, this idea, is that you do walk from one place to another. We needed to beef up, you know, landscape at that point wasn't really developed until the last minute. We needed to beef up and to develop more the walkways, how to create moments of relief and shade, etc. And that could have been done. We could have done that and we would have done that. But in, in, intrinsically, the, 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 the idea is to, 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 to kind of locate the person, to really locate the person in the environment where they are. And to locate them not only in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, the climate, the environment, but also in terms of the architecture, in, in terms of the harshness also of the interior. Also, you know, in these pla places, the, the, the interiors tended to be like that. You know, even the old uh, Ottoman parts of Al-Ula, the old, you know, they, they tended to be this way. So, so that, that's really the idea. And then if you really see the, each piece, there are they are all of them they are very introverted the the architecture is very introverted and if it does look to the outside there is a big buffer uh, between what you see as the glass or let's say a window and the out, outside surface of the building there's a big dis distance there's always a shaded buffer there is always uh, um, uh, we're learning, running low on battery here um, so there is always I, I think I might be better off charging my phone if you don't mind because i'm on my phone yes Shall uh, I... take your time yes, yeah i will have to uh unfortunately hang on it's okay don't worry about it uh while you're uh, uh can you hear me yeah, uh, hold, hold on, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sahil? Uh, Sahil, can, can you hear me? I think, uh, Mahat, Mahat, Mahat. Hello? Uh, uh, Sahil, can you hear me? 
I'm, I'm unfortunately not on speaker because I had to charge my phone. So okay, you know, okay, I can't uh, hear uh, you, but we'll, we'll manage. Okay, okay. Uh, take it easy, take it easy. But uh, I, I just w wanted to see if um, I can ask you a simple favor. Yeah. Um, uh, from uh, your uh, presentation, I have a sense that you are not going to share with us your design for the second house. Are you? No, no, I, I don't have it. I don't have its drawings, unfortunately. I, uh, can, uh, can I ask Claudine to improvise and collect a couple of images so you can uh, uh, comment on them? Because really, I think it's very interesting to share with our students. Sure, of course. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Okay, uh, Claudine, uh, you can easily find really uh, interesting visuals for his house, second house. Because it's a very interesting piece, you know, that, you know, uh, we, uh, we are going to learn a, a lot from it. We can do it in front instead of the Nebo residence, if you like. This is a new project we're still working Yeah, yeah I, I, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I want to, because I know we are going to wrap it up, you know, in a spiritual manner. So uh, let's have a mundane uh, piece of a picture uh, in the middle. Okay. Okay. Uh, Claudine? Uh, can you um, uh, I'm, I'm seeing them on our website uh, uh, can you browse can you browse and share with us uh, I'm gonna add you? the add the link uh, on the chat uh, uh, and, and, the and, the you can share, and you can share your screen um, because I really don't want our students to miss, you know, really uh, Sahel's uh, explanation of the, this beautiful piece of work. Um, Hado, sir. Yes, Hado. Yes. Yeah, we can look. If we look at the plan, basically. Um, Where do you want to begin? I want to begin from the plan, because the plan really is, is it's what generated the plan. Again, it, yeah, this is the plan. Again, I, what I want to say about this project is that it has, there is a huge misconception of, and of also very able architects thinking that the whole purpose of this project was to create this cantilevered space. Actually, it's not. The cantilevered space is a, is, a, is, a, is a solution for a problem that we have, okay? And I will try to explain the problem first so you can understand maybe the solution, why it became uh, 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 the way it is. Uh, basically, it's a small slot, lot of land, okay? And it also slopes diagonally, right? And there yeah. are restrictions of height there are restrictions also of density uh the slope is rather radical from the street to to, to the top and so uh, and then the client went to around six architects before me a few of them actually not from the country and some from here apparently i don't know because there, there was there was no solution really to to this to this problem that if you put a house and if you make a house uh, in a conventional manner where it, you have you put a, 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 a footprint of a house with the program that they wanted most of the the spaces would not have ample light or would not have light at all because most of the ground level would be embedded in the, in the thing either that or you would have a lot of stairs because you have to do it in terraces and uh, what would happen is that they would not uh, get enough garden space, which is the client uh, is obsessed with his garden, and he wanted a lot of space for him to uh, um, to cultivate uh, whatever it is that he wanted. He wanted his garden. He wanted the largest possible 
uh, 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 area for the goblin. So we, we started from this premise. If, and then uh, I thought, what this, this needs to be is a courtyard house that is, is basically, uh, uh, um, uh, it's basically, it's like an open, it's a system, it's taking a, the idea of a courtyard house and kind of uh, breaking it on its diagonal axis and raising one part of it up higher in order for it, for the, 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 the space below it to, to, to be annexed by the garden. So basically what it does, it's an L shape. By doing an L shape building uh, and another one suspended above it, uh, what what happens to the the, the, the the project is that it you reduce entirely the footprint of the building, right? The footprint mm -hmm. of the building becomes minimal, and mm -hmm. by reducing the footprint of the building, you have a much larger area to live to live outside to occupy outside and to have a bigger garden and a bigger sense of that space. So basically, this is the basic premise. So uh, the, the cantilever is, 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 is a private move in the house. And this is a very important point. It is not a move for the public. We didn't do this so you, it can be seen from the outside. It, I was not even interested in what the house looked out like from the outside. What interested me is that space that we're going to um, to create uh, for the family. So if, if you see it, you have, a, again, just to explain a little bit how it works, you have a staircase that takes you from the uh, street level and you go, you, you wind around a big planter and a big tree and then you go up and then if you turn left, you enter the house. Okay. And if uh, you go directly, you go to the back of the house. What we did in this case is the most impressive part of uh, uh, Jordanian uh, residential projects usually where people invest their money, it's in the guest house, right? And, mm -hmm. and sadly, this guest house is this uh, miserable, empty, closed, uh, shut, shut off uh, space that nobody uses. So what we did was to create very intricate domestic spaces internally juxtaposed to a really grand monumental space outside which serves not only uh, for, the, for, for, for the visitors but actually for the family to stay outside the house rather inside the house. So the idea of this house was to push the living space to the outside. So, so you, if you see the floor plan, this is really a very small thing with a dining room and then it's, it's, it's really the most rudimentary kind of floor plan you can think of. And it has a, 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 a small salon overlooking this courtyard and, and, uh, and uh, overlooking the, 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 the view. You have a view from the side of the street. Also, one of the challenges with the client that they wanted to the view, but the view, I, did, I, 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 I didn't believe that the view was important because the view basically was transforming. It was transforming constantly. Do you see what I'm saying? It was uh, 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 it was being built. The area was being built. So I didn't want uh, 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 my uh, the main view of the house to be overlooking uh, other houses, other big houses. Rather, I wanted it to look into the garden. So it's another introverted house, right? So yeah. it's an introverted house, but to a garden and to a large space. If you go to the floor plan, the next floor plan, it has one circular, one staircase element. It has uh, basically a ground level. Uh, uh, sorry, if you go back, Malik, you, you go back. Uh, th there is a garage from one side below this level, and then there is this level. If you go to the next level, there is an intermediate level, which is the terrace oh, below. Okay. Uh, and the uh, uh, upper, ground, upper level, which has the bedrooms. These, okay. these are the, the, the areas that are suspended, okay? Uh, and, uh, uh, and the corridor for the bedrooms, again, overlooks the view. And again, you see the view through these framed, uh, 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 small framed windows. You go to the next, uh, yeah, so this is this section, section, sorry. But by the way, Claudine, there's this, a... this is it. So basically, what it is, if you see, if you see it, the landscape extends to the towards the house, 
and the building goes above the landscape, right? And by doing that, it doesn't, you know, you don't, we, you know, a part of it also, there were all of these trees. If we were to put this in the, in the ground, we would have cut all the trees. And we, it was one of the biggest uh, 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 red lines that we, we, we absolutely did not want to cut them. And also the client did not want to cut them. Now the client, uh, I was very lucky with them to tell you the truth because they are wonderful people. And he is a civil engineer. He has a PhD in, in, in structural design. So for him, this was a, a, an, an, an exciting project and that he could understand that the building would work and structurally it would be sane and safe. And so we were able to do it uh, this way. If you go, if you see the next project. So this is, this is the idea. It's the courtyard that has been uh, 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 broken up and suspended. This view you would never actually see. The only reason you have this view is because we are sitting in the garden above at a certain level and looking at it. That's not the approach of the house. You never approach the house this way. So I just, this, this picture actually is misleading because this is only to show what the house, the compositional element of the house and the structural clarity of the house. The, the issue about this house is that also you, you know, uh, you have a, it, it gives you a certain shock when you go inside because there is this suspended, enormous suspended floor and it's, uh, it's quite impressive. But once you start to desensitize the initial shock, the cantilever disappears and what really starts to come into play is the garden, the trees, the sound of the, uh, of the birds, the water, the, the, all of these kind of subtle things that you, 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 you normally uh, uh, don't pay attention to, they start to really uh, invade the space and, and become really more and more apparent because the, the structure is there. Once you see it once, twice, you get used to it. If you go to an another... This is from the side of the building. Now, actually, even you see this cantilever, this is from the side wall of the building. Now you cannot see it because the trees grew and it looks as if it's, it's, a, it's another level and that cantilever you can't even see. So, you know, um, so mainly the, the, the house is about that internal space. I would like us to see the space uh, inside. Yeah, that's another side view. That's what you see in the front. The front, actually, there's our terraced gardens and then, you know, you, you get to the house through a side stair. But there is, yeah, it's a, in a way, it's a conventional house when you think about it. In, in so many ways, it's a conventional house. The most unconventional thing about it, it's its spatial quality. That is achieved by uh, an investment in stru structural design. That's, that's, I think, my, yeah. so this is also in a, in a, in a, in a, in a it's a little bit distorted. It's a wide lens. You don't see it this way. This, the space or the opening is kind of, it's much more subtle. It's, uh, it's not as, ex as extended, but, you know, hopefully one day, if you, if you like, I can organize a trip to this house. I think the owners would allow us, so, you know. Uh. I think the, subtle, the subtlety of, that you were talking about, about the house, uh, works very well, just like what you did with the resort that you tried to make it blend with nature. Uh, you're not trying yeah, to make it pop up. I like, I mean, in, in yes. most of the projects, I don't see, I, I, I like, I like, you know, projects are in landscape. They are in landscape, whether we like it or not. Yes. Each project is in a landscape, whether it's a built up landscape, an urban landscape, or whether it's a, it's a natural or semi-natural or man-made or whatever landscape. So in, yes. in this is the, the upper part, of course, if you take the stairs up here, there's another uh, terra, uh, garden, and then through that side door, you get to the terrace. And so there is a maximization of uh, spaces within, within that garden. There's the terrace, there's, that's the entry. Uh, the scale is small. If you see, there is nothing really, uh, you know, if you look at the scale of the chair through the space, it's a tiny vestibule that has a guest bathroom. All right. So it's just to give you an idea of the scale. Next. This is also the, the, the space, so, yeah. 
And then this is, of course, uh, a, a staircase that uh, connects the whole level from the garage all the way up to the upper level. There's an elevator as well. So this is, uh, this is how you move vertically to the space. And uh, of course, the pool is slightly tucked onto that space, but it's in the sun. And then so you have a sun deck, the pool, and then a shaded deck. I mean, it has a lot of uh, different uses. And that's the, the, the way it is uh, uh, from the distant hill. Any questions? Um, if you don't mind me asking again, I know I'm taking up everyone's time. <laughs> no, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay, one thing you, you, is. You, you are on a roll. Go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my friend and I were texting about how uh, how it's amazing that you can achieve a perfect exterior as well as work very hard and very suitably with the interior. So she was asking you, uh, as well as being an architect, are you also an interior architect? Yeah, I do interiors. I mean, I've helped the client select the furniture. I've helped, uh, I mean, I do the materials, of course, or everything in terms of material detailing, all the interior architecture, let's say. Uh, uh, I do. I'm not a decorator, to be honest, but I can select furniture. I can help uh, select. And I, I honestly don't like these projects that, uh, that, uh, uh, that have this kind of barren interior with one chair where, you know, you punish the client into, you know, I, I want the client to have their Persian carpets. If they have somebody inherited this from their parents and they want to have it, why not? You know, I mean, Adolf Loss, of course, did that, you know, in his buildings the inside was they were rich. You know, they had they have they come with you with their uh, with their objects and they come with you with their tastes and they they live in the houses at the end of the day. So so I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm I kind of what I do is maybe guide them, but not really do entirely the the decorative part. But I guide them, I, 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 uh, or, or we do it together. In this case, we, 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 we did this together. You know, there are things that we collected from, from a lot of places, from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Spain, from, you know, from different places, and, uh, and so on. You know, but if you see the material, let's say, the, the floor, the same floor that I used for the garage or for the, for the bedrooms and for the courtyard is the same floor for the salon. It's one floor. So we don't, I don't get into, you know, what I, I, I do is to try to establish a system for the interior, which can be then later altered by the client, which can be inhabited by the client. It's uh, simple, uh, but just in, in relation to what Maha asked, I think the significance of your work is that, you know, you are showing how architecture should be intertwined with the interior, you know, as opposed to the conventional myth that uh, bo uh, the two disciplines are separate and each one you know has its own uh, field of specialty yeah so especially, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, especially for students of artificial reality, they they had to approach design as a total package yeah I, I think one of the major major problems i see and i see in in in, in a lot of uh, uh, things is that there is a lot of focus on the the architecture as an exterior expression or as a, as a summation of, of, of syntax, of elements that you put together. And then there is no floor plan. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I, I mean, I really like floor plans. I like to work with floor plans. That's what I, how I work. It starts with the floor plan. It starts with the space. It starts with understanding the height of the space, the window of the space, what you see in that space. And, and, uh, uh, I, I think most, more, most, more than the separation of interior design and exterior, there is also a separation in, 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 in the discourse of architecture now that you see that you see these sheds that are uh, sometimes really impressive, but with no floor plans, no spatial experiences, no, uh, yeah. no spatial qualities to speak of. And, and honestly, I think architecture is... A, 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 is about it's in what it encloses, that space it, that, that it makes, and the expression it gives to the outside. It's the summation of both. 
it's not one or the other it's both working as one integral element right and yes and yeah. uh, and, and you know in this building which has this structural thing investment it was very important that the interior space was very small to create these contrasts right and and yeah. and, uh, and, and 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 very carefully kind of crafted and then with various materials and then maybe you know with one element of concrete that comes in but then the less the rest is wallpaper and this this comes to show is that uh, and a lot of people criticize that because you know nowadays with with there is this mentality that maybe it should be all one material of course we like this this is uh, wonderful and i'd like that as well and maybe with one sofa and that's it you know but that those are not homes really those are wonderful pictures to look at but they do, do not constitute homes at the end of the day you do something that has a higher perf- purpose it serves other things that than good photography right it, it yes. there is a higher higher <laughs> it's meant to do what it's meant to do it's meant to serve people and it's meant to, it's meant to serve needs and it's meant to serve uh, tastes and it's meant to you know, it, it, it's meant to also address idiosyncrasies of people and how they see, see themselves and how they see themselves represented in the space they live in. And so I think that's what you see in this project, especially. You see that a lot, you know. And so, yeah. yeah. Yes, Doctor, can I quote uh, an architect uh, that I read in a book recently? It has to do with what you said about how architecture is not about the, just designing the house. It's about, you know, keeping in mind the environment around you. It's about the spatial creation that you make. Yeah. Kind of. There's a quote by Louis Kahn that says, architecture is the thoughtful making of space. And I agree with that completely. We're imposing on nature we're not just building houses for ourselves we're taking space in nature we're borrowing from nature we have to keep that in mind every single time yeah absolutely uh i see thank you so much okay uh, you have a question okay mariam 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 sorry mariam mariam go ahead Mariam? Okay, Mariam, if you are not there, uh, if you are there, unmute your uh, mic, mic, please. Okay, okay then let's move to Rafiq. Otherwise, we will continue. Uh, Mariam has, has a problem with her mic. Okay, Ma- Can Mariam, she text? Can she text the can she text the question? Ba- 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 please text your question. Mariam. Or we can move to somebody else and then she can text the question and I'll get we'll get to the her question. Okay. Uh, anyone else wants to Ah. Okay, uh, I, I think I uh, want to ask, yes, yeah, sir. If I, but I prefer to be at uh, the end, uh, priority for our students. And, uh, uh, remember me at the end. Okay, okay. but uh, nice, I, I, I'm sure you have a lot to say. So uh, we are saving uh, the best for yeah, the rest. Yes. For, uh, priority for our students, then we can ask. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think I'm getting, uh, they texted us their question. Um, Munir, Munira, can uh, engineer Sahil uh, elaborate about the structural aspect of the cantilever? Uh, yes, I can. It, 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 first of all, I have to give credit where credit needs to be given. This was designed by Asas, uh, by uh, engineer Ismail Aqil and Khalid Darwazi, engineer Khalid Darwazi, and they did a brilliant job uh, uh, studying it again and again and recalculating it. Um, what it is basically is that uh, the, the, there is no separation between the architecture and the structure. 
you live in a structure or let's say the, the, the architecture itself is a structure. So every wall, all the walls you see are structural elements. So it's an integral element, you know, uh, uh, with, with locations where the, where, the, where the parts of the cantilever happens, there are these mega columns, but then the cantilever itself is a beam. So the walls of the house are beams basically, you know. Yeah. And in principle, this is what it is. And and if you look at uh, 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 if you look at the the, the 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 thing entirely as a structural thing, if you build it in a model and you put enough weight in the ground also, and you pin it to the ground, and if if all the elements are uh, well enforced, it it holds and it stands very well. Actually. The deflection was less than four millimeters, less than four millimeters at the, wow. the biggest wow. point. And we're talking, we're talking about there is 15 meters by, by, I can't remember the exact, but almost 15 meters in the long, maybe more even, uh, in the long span of it. So uh, this is how the, the, the conceptually the structure is. Uh, it, it's all a steel reinforced steel uh, walls. It's wall beams, basically. Mm. And then I can tell you actually something more interesting, um, which uh, what we've, of course, do you have bathrooms in the, in the, in the, in the, in this cantilever. And of course, you don't see when you look at the cantilever from the bottom, it's also concrete. So there is a double slab, which is a double slab a lower slab, which is a structured slab. And then there was a good amount of foam concrete through which all the piping uh, was calculated with an incline to go towards uh, uh, shafts that take, your, take the water and the drainage from the bathrooms from, you know, to, to the, uh, um, to, to, to the, um, uh, the drainage system and the plumbing system, etc. So that was also an interesting solution because we wanted to see the slab below. We didn't want a false ceiling in the space. Originally, actually, it was designed with a false ceiling and I hated it and I didn't know how to resolve it at the time. But then we found the solution when we started to build. We kept on trying and trying and trying and then we did, we readjusted the drawings when we started to build because it was possible to do that and we did that. Yeah. Okay, uh, but then uh, one last question before we move to the next uh, project. Um, Rafiq, you, you were asking about the exterior finish of, I don't know which project are you asking about, Rafiq? Uh, and your text did not finish. Uh, you can voice your question now if you can. Hmm. Okay, but, but uh, you know, finishing is, is a, a big aspect of your work that uh, deserves a whole talk by itself. So, without... finish, finish, finishes for me. I can tell you how I like. I mean, what I like really. Hmm. What I like about being in Jordan actually is the idea of uh, the craft and the idea of the. The stonemasons and the trade and their their capacity of of making things by hand and the imperfections that come out from uh, um, from making uh, uh, something at hand um, because because a lot of the work I do is is extremely it it, it's, it can be very strong and at sometimes harsh let's say like in the Barghouti house with these slabs of concrete they are non-apologetic at all and but when you are really in the space and you see the undulation on the surface of that concrete you see the hand that has touched the concrete it almost looked it looks like clay you know because it's not perfect and i don't try to do these perfect finishes because they will never happen in jordan on the contrary what i try to do is take the, the, the craft of what we have and make something out of it. Mm -hmm. I do it, Ammar Khamash does it, a lot of architects do it, I'm not the only one. But we each do it in our own way. But for me, what I like to do is also take, uh, uh, for example, um, 
a certain craftsman that works with a certain material but have him work on another material like a stonemason that has to finish for me a concrete and this is what happened in the Sackett house and the Barghouti house wow. and, and vice versa by the way so you know uh, uh, this is how it is okay I, I think uh, uh, Claudine we can move to uh, Mount Nebo uh, Mount Nebo, uh, I, I'll go through it quickly because I, uh, uh, so we can open more. Mount, Mount Nebo basically is a project that um, we were approached by a client with a very big family and he had uh, a, a beautiful uh, um, uh, land uh, very close at the back of this here would be, I don't know, you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, no, I'm just going to share screen. I'll present now. Come on, uh, hang on. Uh, hang on. One moment. Uh, where did it go? Okay. Resume presenting. Is that it? Excuse me? Ah, yes. Okay, I'm not going to your screen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's in speed, yeah. Okay. So, so, so basically, this, this, this project is in the area of Nebo. The monastery is in the back. The back of this there's a mountain between us and the monastery and then there is this land surrounded by um, uh, government lands and apparently he managed to buy this the only last private land in this area it's this triangular lot he managed to buy it and uh, it started off with as a project uh, for his for his family basically and um, uh, it's a large it's like a it's almost a 10 bedroom house. It keeps on changing. We're still, you know, now it's a 10 bedroom house. We, we keep on changing still the, 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 the composition of bedrooms. But, uh, and so it started off like that, but then it ended up becoming um, a guest house because basically that person does not live in Jordan. And uh, the idea was to, uh, if he's not living in Jordan, he might as well benefit by creating a guest house or a very, very small hotel uh, that, that he can uh, uh, invite people to either or rent it out to a group of people or create a, 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 a small uh, a, a destination that overlooks the Dead Sea and this really, really beautiful landscape around it. Of course, it's all empty in front of it, so it's, it's really wonderful. Well, what we did for this project is as follows, because there is a there is a slope in the land and we wanted to create one floor or one floor for the for the guest house and to to, to locate that on 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 a, a flat landscape so we we worked according to uh, we, we somehow aligned the building with the, with the topography with the topography so it picks up one line of the topography and then it juts out and then below this becomes there is a level for the spa etc the idea is basic is basic i was um i'm more and more interested in um in hypostyle halls colonnades and uh, uh spaces that are uh completely uh, designed by means of uh, like uh, uh, creating an enfilade of of rooms so what we did is is this we created an entry there are the two stairs here and this is cut into the rock and then the entry is right here to a pavilion that is glazed to the outside with two gardens two courtyards and the pool right here and then sun decks around with bedrooms to either side it's the geometric system that repeats there is this geometry and um while i was doing it actually after i did it i realized that uh, uh, I, I'll always throw in, I'll throw for you the reference because it is, it is a very important thing that in, in, in terms of looking at things retrospect, re, 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 in a retrospective manner, you know, what it means later 
after you do the, the, the project to find similarities in other areas. So again, you know, uh, in, in terms of uh, sectionally, this is how it works. So you have one level and then it's a completely rudimentary section of two levels, one for the main uh, guest house or house, and then another one for the spa. And this is the uh, longitudinal section, which you see, which there is a subtle kind of uh, difference in level to the, to, to the central space. And what we did is, sorry, yeah. So this is the reference I wanted to see. This is the cave of Sibylla in Kuma, Kumea, the Kumean, Kumean uh, 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 archeological site in, it's very close to Naples actually. Hello. What does this have to do with, 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 you may ask, what does this have to do with Madaba? And I can answer what does Mount Nebo has to do with Madaba? I, the, 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 at the end, this, this whole idea of, of architecture, I think, I'm, I'm starting to realize that there is um, almost a collective subconscious that we connect to in one way or another. And then that, that comes out in specific, specific manners to make, a certain, uh, to make a certain impression or to make a certain reference. In this case, when I started to do it without understanding this reference, I wanted this whole idea of the arcade, of the arch spaces, you know, of the, the, the idea in my head was the cloister, right? And of the arch, the arches in a cloister. And I started to abstract them into a more geometric, uh, um, a more geometric form, basically. Uh, which became these triangles, and they became the structural element that uh, regulate uh, the space. Uh, as the project developed, and I saw this other thing, this I see, again, other possibilities and other references. And one which is to this, uh, uh, Sibylla basically is, is, is uh, a priestess. So again, there is this almost religious uh, aspect to the building, that very much connects to the nature of the, the area itself. There is a monastery in, 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 in some part, there is a, a, a cross, there is a, 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 the Mkawer, and there are the, 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 the mosaics basically of Madaba, and it's, it's an area full of archeological interest. So the idea here was to, to kind of summon that, but, but, but remaining kind of very ambiguous to what exactly it is you're summoning. So this was, this was the idea. So it, it, the, the space itself, uh, 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 it, it sits in the landscape and overlooks the, uh, the, um, the view. Uh, this is the entrance where you come from the back, okay? And uh, it, 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 it is, there is a courtyard of some sort of like, or a, or a break in the two masses. In this mass here, these masses contain all the services of this uh, structure so they remain completely closed with courtyard we can go can go back to the with a lot of courtyards basically to create uh, the ventilation and light but without uh, the, the expression of fenestration on the uh, on the facades because i wanted the, the the expression only to be of that structure that that continues throughout the space so as you go in Uh, so this is the approach, sorry, from the, there is a mismatch in the arrangement, but this is the approach from the side. You arrive, you walk, you go down to this area, and then you enter the house, and the door opens towards this structural system that creates the identity of the space and the architecture as well. So it's really like almost a pavilion in the desert. And then there is a swimming pool that happens in, 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 in the... In, a, in the portico outside, in the, in, the port, uh, in the loggia outside, basically. And uh, a series, this is the main public space of the house, which has a dining area, two seating spaces, etc. This is from looking at it laterally, and laterally you have the gardens. Uh, the expression of the material of the exterior here, in this case, goes to the interior, but with the floor that is... Uh, uh, um, we're trying to make this out of uh, um, uh, either ceramic or, or, or mosaic. We, we're not really sure what the floor will be like. This is an early studies. We're still working on it. 
And as you go outside, you know, as you, you, as you uh, experience or you walk through the house, there are always, um, you, you get these framed views to the landscape, to the outside. And you get these, uh, 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 almost a panorama, but that happens through uh, that structure. And this is the exterior. The proportions have been fixed. This is not the actual proportion. These are early drawings. Uh, but then, you know, and then in one of them, let's say this becomes cut and it's, uh, it's a fountain. And uh, I think that's it. So <laughs> it's a work in progress project. So um, if you have any questions, I can answer. Uh, you know, it, it, somehow one is so transfixed to the extent that, you know, it does not want your uh, presentation to end. <laughs> but but, what, 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 we live we live in this earth and we are bound by space and time. You know, no matter how uh, archetypal we want. To... Uh, I'm going to put my, <laughs> my headphones. I can hear you. Yes, sir, I can't hear you. Just for one minute. Sorry, yes, sir, I can't hear you. I, you were saying. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, what what I'm uh, sharing with you is. Um, uh, uh, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, I put my yeah. headphones back. I uh, zapped the phone a little bit more, so it has okay. more. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. we, we don't mind if you take us, you know, to, you know, for days to come. You know? <laughs> and it's, no, I'm, yeah. you know, it's it's all work in progress. This project, for example, is 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 a very challenging project because of the windows. How we're going to make the windows? How we're going to make the structure? What kind of concrete mm. we're going to be using? Uh, yeah, it's. Mm. We're, Anyway, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I think there are a couple of questions here uh, by our uh, students. Ma Ma Maryam, you are still uh, off the mic. Okay, I I'll ask this question on your behalf. Uh, I noticed that every building gives a different feeling and spirit. I guess because of using different structures and materials. Let's say, if I'm not listening to you, uh, I would say that you, they are separated projects, not one project. So what makes you take such a decision? My question is related to the resort project in Saudi. Um, uh, she's uh, saying perhaps that you know each uh, part of it you know has a different character. Maybe this is what she's referring to. Yeah, I mean they have different characters, and yeah. the projects themselves. This is very different uh, project, let's say, than the Saudi project. But there is an underlying, um, there are filaments that connect them all. And the filaments are usually spatial. You know, there is a certain material weight to each one of them. There's a certain way of treatment of, I mean, there's a lot of common, common things between them. If you, if you really look at it, the light, the materiality, the weight of the buildings, the way architecture, you know, mafi uh, facades, they're really, it's, it's becoming more and more about the architecture becomes the structure, becomes the image itself, becomes the material. Um, fee, but yes, and, and also the idea is I, I do not want to, and this is a fact, I do not want to uh, uh, fall into the trap, which I see a lot of architects falling into this trap of being, of quoting themselves all the time. So I do one project in one style and then I make a trajectory or a lifetime of work based on quoting myself uh, again and again and again and again and again. Uh, I, I, because, I, because I think it's a self-cannibalism kind of. It's, it's something that eats itself and you paint yourself in a corner and you are unable to explore um, the wonderful potentials of architecture and what, what, what different things may offer you, you know. Uh, and, and then we do at the end different projects and we do different clients and they're in the different climates. I don't want to have one project that looks the same here and in Spain and in Lebanon and in, you know, or, or even in one, in one geographic location. There are different, uh, um, uh, there are different solutions. That's why, I, that's why there is this idea of dispersion in them. You, you know, you're, 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 you're looking at these dispersed references and you pull them out and you bring them in and you re, re, recombine them and they reoccur in other places. 
بس في كاركتر معين بيربطهم يعني انه بيربط الكل يعني يا yeah. um, شاد ساديا كان اصل كوشن ساديا فرزانه لا اسكت بويست بويست اوكي Okay, so I just wanted to ask, uh, what is the main idea or theme behind this uh, Mount Nebo project? The I, the same the idea is this is repetition. It's the repetition of one system that creates a lot of other things. It creates spaces. It creates structure. It creates facade and it creates it's it's the rudimentary arch basically. It's uh, that that's the idea. It's to do something. Uh, with uh, uh, a minimum palette and to create a lot of rich varieties from it. That's the idea. And to also uh, uh, vaguely, vaguely, and I, I stress vaguely and obscurely, uh, uh, summon this whole idea of archaeology in a, in a, or, or antiquity or uh, 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 anachronism even, an object that doesn't belong to its time, you know, And this idea of, of and, and there is a lot of anachronism in my work recently because I, I think, you know, it is important to be anachronistic. It's important to be of this time and of, uh, uh, you know, of, of the present and of the past and the future. And they're all now at the same time. You know, the history is now, you know, we, yeah. history is part of our present. So why not? Uh, 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 so you have tried uh, to connect the history with the current uh, structures as well. Uh, yes, but in a vague way, it's not like a direct. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry again, my battery is low. It's in a vague way. I'm not going to do that in a in a in a literal way. Ah, in Indi, Anna, like uh, Mount Nebo, the the church. Ah, I I go crazy. I have to quote it. No, I I quoted something. You know, and that's why I showed you the the Kumea, the 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 Sibila cave in Kuma Kumea, because because. It's so irrelevant, but it yet it's so relevant to this project. And at the same time, it it's, it, it isn't. And at the same time, you know, it's, it's, this idea of displacement sometimes is very important. You see what I'm saying? It, uh, it, it looks abstract. It can be abstract, but it can be, you know, uh, f from another, another, another time, another period, right? So it's, it's this, this idea of displacing people, removing them from their familiar, from the everyday. And this is perfect. Yeah. For a retreat like that, um, mm. did I answer you? Uh, I, I think really this. Yes, is not uh, thank you so much. You are welcome. Um, I know that uh, the Professor Naif is dying. Yeah. To, to uh, I am <laughs> uh, so especially, uh, I, I guess you know you have a lot to say about the historicity of his work and its multiple historical references yes 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 i know that and yeah. يعني, what يعني, uh, Sahil, you give me an idea for a seminar that i would like to be يعني, you to be part of it i will return my questions because you يعني, you emphasize or maybe a, يعني, a question that was repeated in a lot of our lectures online uh, lectures mm. A collective memory or memory, collective memory, but you add personal memory and connection to history. And this yeah. is the lessons I learned uh, uh, and I am learning my students about. This is very important issue, I believe. I would like to hear your opinion and what is the future about collective memory and how should the architect be, be free to his own personal memory and how we should uh, involve the historical let us say issues history of architecture and art in our work in the digital age and yeah. then i will continue but i would like to hear your opinion uh, and i can i can only talk about uh, Sahel, Sahel, can, I, can i add something to what uh, naib said just uh, i want yeah. to uh, familiarize you with the context of his question Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is perhaps the fifth uh, fifth uh, uh, lecture in our series where mm -hmm. we are discussing the issue of the relevance of collective memory uh, in in design. 
Yeah. Uh, we discussed it with uh, Ahmad Khamash. We discussed this with uh, our, our colleagues and uh, partners from uh, yeah. uh, State University. Yeah, who, who are helping us? In, for in, that, in, yes, sir, what I am thinking before uh, yani answering, uh, I would like to organize a seminar from different uh, yani researchers and architects and to make um, a seminar, a dialogue maybe, about collective memory and architectural design um, in our digital age, to understand this relation and how we can uh, and give our students understanding of history as a process of design. It is not only to memorize information. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can. I can only. I mean, first of all, you know, I, I think collective memory. Hmm. Uh, when you talk of collective memory, to me, it 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 sees no boundaries and it sees no geographic boundaries or cultural boundaries. You know, it, it is something that it's it's almost this primordial soup of ideas that you can connect to. And you cannot talk about this really without talking, you know, getting into a little bit more of mysticism. But I don't want to get into that. But mm -hmm. for me, for me and for a student, Yanni, the advice I give to a, a student, um, the, the, the idea of, um, of, of looking at history, basically, is not only to quote it, but it's actually to learn from it. I mean, I, uh, when in my education uh, in the university, I was lucky enough to have um, uh, 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 teachers who were very interested in history and in rationalism and in, in, in uh, kind of typology and in, in understanding kind of the rudimentary of making architecture through plans, sections, elevations. And this is the 80s, basically. Yasser, you know what it was like. Uh, and I'm sure you can like even 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 give a better description than I do. But in these formative years, I was able to. It's it's like music. I was able to understand what a classical composition. How does it consist of? What does it consist of? What is the most important thing about its proportional systems? And how does it relate to a spatial system? The space versus proportional systems. And when I presented this last project, I'm telling you. Ah, the proportions changed because the proportions were off here, but now we have really perfect proportions because they are done according to sacred geometry, the, 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 the arch, the opening to the height. Fa, 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 fa. And it looks easier on the eye, you know, when you look at it, it's easier on the eye. Anyway, but, but to come back to this idea, uh, 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 there is this collective memory and there is the, the idea of rigor, that you really need to be rigorous. I mean, you're using a language that, uh, that, that, that has that has, yeah, that has certain uh, uh, um, rules, and I'm not saying that you know the rules cannot be broken. Black, they can be broken, manipulated, and recombined, etc. Especially in the digital age, basically. But but there is this aspect of rigor, and there is this aspect of uh, uh, interest in these uh, in, in, in 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 these histories, and there is this idea that architecture does not only exist in the 20th century, you know, which is a massive, massive problem that we're facing right now at the universities, that they only look at projects from the 20th century uh, up to now and contemporary times. This is a disaster, you know. What happens to Alberti? What happens to Vitruvio? What happens to the old Egyptian uh, temples? What happens to the Mayan? I put Mayan stuff on purpose today because because it is important, and it is really the, 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff where Frank Lloyd Wright copied from the Mayans. You know, it's 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 really, uh, uh, um, but not copied in, a, in 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 the bad sense of the word, but inspired him to do his his wonderful works. So so you have that aspect on 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 that on, on that side. The personal anecdote is very important. I do not deny myself as a person, really, and I do not d deny my whimsical self as a person. Uh, and, and it took me a long time after coming out of a school that really required you to rationalize and rationalize and rationalize. It took a long time for me to learn this freedom. But looking in retrospect, I am very glad that I was able to rationalize and rationalize and rationalize because at some point you can leave it feeling, you know, uh, pretty secure that what you're doing is happening internally. It's an internal question. You can find solutions and explanations later on. But 
and, and to bring me back to the beginning of my talk, I don't like to give titles because to my talks because basically they put they, they frame the work in a certain uh, framework that you can only look at it through this Arif. And then a mm -hmm. lot of times, mm -hmm. a lot of architects, they create these frameworks before they even design. And, and so it is putting on your, it's like having a ball and chain on your feet, basically, that makes you unable to move, makes you unable to connect to not only uh, histories, to other cultures, to other techniques of building, to other, and, and then you say, ah, you know, uh, 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 I, I can't because it cannot be done, you know. But why can't it be done, you know? Why can't you have the glass, fork, and knife? <laughs> you see mm. what I'm saying? Going back to where we started. So this is my um, this is my take, and maybe it's a very personal way of of doing things. But it is a personal way of doing things, and I don't expect you know other people to follow uh, uh, what I do or to do it the same way I do. But trust me. There's a lot of architects right now that are returning to kind of uh, uh, history and archaic history. Uh, mm -hmm. Almost there's an archaic revival. And I think this archaic revival is resulting from a, 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 a certain crisis that we're, we're, we're facing. The crisis of, of the, the, um, the environment, the crisis of uh, social injustice, the crisis of... Mm -hmm. So what do we look at? We look at the grandeur of what is history has achieved, what people has, have left us, devoid of its meaning. You know, when I look at Abu Simbel, I don't look at it as, uh, as, as thinking of the, of, 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 of the Book of the Dead and what it means and so on and so forth. I look at it as pure genius of engineering and work of art. And, and, and that's what they have left, really. You know, the, 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 the form is, 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 has a meaning, had, has had a meaning for them, right? But we, we can also pour our own personal meaning into that form. Uh, and it is a dangerous thing because you, you have to be, it, it can, you can border on kitsch also. I am very aware of that. But sometimes I feel, okay, this is board, board, uh, bordering on kitsch. And this is when another force in me goes back to re-edit myself and refix the plan and re-go and visit it again and make it more... Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 rigorous and make it and then go back to rationality. So it's this, it's this ongoing cyclical process, mish a linear process of design. I don't design in a linear way at all, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm, I hope I answered this clearly. I'm not sure I, <laughs> I did. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not only you answered, you are opening a, a lot of avenues so that, yeah, for, further, for further discussions. Um, I, I would like to comment, but I will, uh, I, th I think Naif has uh, yes, still... Yes. I would like yeah, the Toriasser to organize uh, a seminar about collective memory and architectural design. Uh, we can call different um, yani researchers, architects with different opinions. And I would like to have one or two students or um, maybe I, yani, I saw some uh, names. Uh, Nadim, uh, our student Ronnie Gattas, uh, uh, Ghatban uh, from um, Applied Science University, maybe Bisher, uh, maybe else from our partner from um, uh, uh, Hazard University. Let's make a seminar about this issue, and uh, maybe we can um, put some frames. Yani moderator uh, to have the scientific approach, or the let us say the rev review about a small review about collective memory from academic approach, but in what is uh, this means in a practical uh, way uh, from a practical architects or different opinions? Because collective memory, يعني, it's a very important issue to understand and to deal uh, for our students. And I believe that most of the lectures, يعني, always يعني, most of the architects, يعني, I didn't uh, wait for himself to talk about uh, yani, so i i was very impressed uh, with your uh, work and your presentation but uh, yani, i didn't know about this part of your um passion or you are uh, in love with uh, concepts how you can take it uh, from um, the landscape this is very important from history when you talked about your project, I remember 
immediately a very important project in the history of architecture in Egypt, Temple of Hatshepsut, how they dealt with the landscape. Mm. This is lessons from this. With very simple post and lintel with a small ramp. This is, I believe that yani, uh, monuments will be forever. Mm. So we have to learn from history, but not to imitate. This is very Im important issue. But mm. how we can develop our approaches about these issues. So what I would like yani, to suggest, yes, sir, that we can make, and it, I would like, yani, because you mentioned a name that uh, it's forgotten, uh, Ali Maher. And I would like to be this seminar in the memory of Ali Maher. Yeah, I wish he's... Uh, yeah, awesome. we can do this together. What do you we, think, yes, sir? We will act upon it, I promise you. Palace, okay. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Um, uh, uh, actually, Maha, Maha today, is, as I said, she's in a role. She, uh, she is a, uh, Maha, Maha, Maha make a, a, an excellent presentation. Uh, yes. Where is Maha? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Maha, 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 you, you mentioned something. I learned uh, from here. Uh, Alberti, Alberti and uh, anachronism. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, elaborate, uh, elaborate on this. Uh, yeah. So basically, at that time, they were... Um, designing churches and cathedrals in gothic style and what he did was that he put classical style on the facade so uh the pope really hated that and he antagonized him a lot on that but he still persisted he kept putting a classical uh, facade on all his uh, all his constructions and i think that was very impressive <laughs> Yeah, what it's because they, they considered the pagan, the church considered the pagan. Sorry, sorry, but and I would like Naha to be uh, as a, yani, to have a small discussion about yani, this seminar. Okay. Do you agree? <laughs> it is very I important for the students this time. Professors and students and practitioners. The, 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 the students should, should play a leading role of this. You know, yeah. This, yeah. And, and Maha, Maha, you are in our team. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am honored, Doctor. Uh, uh, please, please, please uh, uh, comment. No, no. I, I yeah, yeah. No, the, the thing about uh, Alberti is very interesting because they they, they were considered pagan. Um, you know, and the, the whole Renaissance was, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. was pagan, and, it, and then again, it was a project that was funded by the bourgeois. And you know, when you really think about it, it was. The own, their own way, Anna, uh, my personal reading is that, uh, and especially when you go to Villa Borghese and you see the, uh, 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 you see, uh, who is it, Bernini sculptures, yeah. Um, uh, and you see all the frescoes and they really brought back antiquity and brought, brought back uh, Greek myth and Roman myth into the, into the play and dressed it up a little bit with, you know, mixed it up with Christianity. And what that did actually is that it, it, it broke down the, the fundamentalism the church had. Yeah. That was the beginning of breaking down the fundamentalism because when you would, when you would enter a space, all of a sudden now you're, you know, the kind of mythology comes into, into, into not churches, but at least public buildings and palazzi and all of that. Mythology comes into play, you know, when you, when you see Amor and Psyche in the ceiling and they're telling you, the, the ceilings are telling you an anecdote, but about mythology, right? Not about necessarily, yeah, yeah. not like the medievalism, which really was very fundamentalist. Mm. So, so that, that broke down kind of, um, oh, not broke down, but I think opened the, the whole uh, question of faith to, to, to a more kind of broader spectrum, to, to a broader sense of what faith means, you know, and what art yeah, means yeah, and what architecture yeah. means. And how can that actually uh, socially um, uh, 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 change people, right? You know, so, yeah. so um, yes. So, and there was anachronisms at the time as well. And, uh, yeah. And the, the idea of timelessness is related, yeah. you know, to, to do a timeless building, it has to be, somehow anachronistic to a certain yeah. level, you know, uh, one way that to, uh, doesn't belong to a time, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. the very, very interesting thing about anachronism, because it really problematizes the very notion of uh, even collective history. And um, this is something mm. that has been established uh, during uh, our past uh, discussions with our guest speakers. Mm. 
where we they start mm. to see a, a distinction between what I call, or what I personally called at, at the time, collective memory and archetypal memory. Mm -hmm. I think archetypal memory is more interesting, to, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I think that is applicable to you most then. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's that. It's really more, more archetype. It's not collective. Yeah. It's yeah. archetypal. Archetypal uh, is more like it. It's the summoning yeah. the other archetype and summoning kind of yeah. this whole idea of um, because the archetype also is is ancestral, you know, yeah. And, yeah. And, and there is this idea of refuge in the ancestral, right? And of how our ancestors did it, and it, 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 it runs. And ironically, it's very personal. This is, you know, the, uh, you know, the yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, it is personal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. because, we, we, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Can I say something really quick mm -hmm. about that uh, that house you designed with the garden? Um, they all have like, gardens, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but that one specifically made to. Uh, uh, incorporate the garden specifically, that one. Um, it, it reminded me of the Crystal Palace that was built in 1851, in the sense that uh, they designed it in a way so that it, uh, the materials they used, it blurred the exterior with the interior, so that mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't a place to look out from. It wasn't about looking out from inside. It was about sort of uh, creating a structure that stays inside. Your house reminded me of that in the sense that the garden, you put the garden around in a way where they can live in the moment in the garden. You know, it wasn't about looking outside at the neighborhoods, it was about creating an environment inside. That was very impressive. Yeah, maybe, maybe Annie, uh, uh, this is also an interesting reading. I know, never saw it this way because simply because Crystal Palace is about this transparency and non-presence. Yes. And yes. While my work more is about weight and heaviness and you know monolithic uh, volumes and presence and you know, but, but it's an interesting way to see it also. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they designed it in a way so that uh, so that when you're inside it, you feel you only feel being inside. You don't think about the outside, about the environment around the palace. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, and of course, I know time is running. I want to, to give as much time as we can to uh, the rest of our students. Uh, Shuruq. Shuruq al -Jay. Yes, Shuruq al -Jay. Hello. Uh, please. Uh, how are you? Um, good evening good. for all. Thank you. I, thank you, architect um, Sahel, for the um, interesting. Uh, uh, the presentation. I have a question about, um, let's say, the gap or the um, maybe it's a big challenge um, to to fill that gap between the genuine architecture and um, yeah, I mean, contemporary, contemporary architecture. In time, we have um, that technology and let's say technological revolution. Um, and parametric architecture um, before the generation. Um, it's maybe let's say hard to persuade people um, about um, yeah, I mean, the traditional architecture, the heritage in general. So, what do you think is the um, the suitable way to persuade people in, uh, in in heritage in general and to to make them let's say um, um, happy to see it in, in architecture and around the world, not just like a type or like uh, something uh, you you like to, uh, 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 um, let's say, some kind of people who love, but uh, like um, a culture, like um, a, a new generation of architecture. I, I, I'm sorry, I, that, um, I yes. don't understand your question. Sorry, sorry, I have to interrupt you because okay. I don't understand your question. If you can just take... Okay. Uh, articulated in a very clear, concise way. I, I'll be able to answer it. But okay. uh, what I understood in the how to make people like architecture, this is what I understood. So is this uh, what no, you were no, asking? No, uh, it's, no. Uh, my, my question is about uh, heritage, let's say, and the gap between uh, the, the, uh, the contemporary architecture and um, uh, what we see in contemporary architecture and heritage. There's a lot of, there's a lot of 
uh, differences and yeah, I, a very I big gap between. I, I don't think heritage. I don't think heritage opposes. Uh, 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 you know, I, I think heritage is a continuum of what we have. Yani, RFTK, yani, I don't see these separations, you know, that heritage is old, you don't look at it, and, you know, and if I want to yeah, be conceptual, like, not, you know, I, I don't really understand your questions. Part of it is that it needs to be short and very clear. Otherwise, I won't be able to okay. say, so you have to excuse me. So if you can make okay. it very short and very clear. Uh, so, 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 How to fill the gap? Uh, the question yeah. in, in in a very short sentence, in a very short sentence, how to fill how to fill the gap between genuine architecture and parametric architecture? Ah, uh, okay, that, that's uh, how to I, fill the gap between be, be, uh, genuine between, architecture uh, or between, traditional architecture. Okay, okay, and between, all right, all right. Let, let me summarize it. Uh, I would just me uh, rephrase it for you. Uh, how do you fill the gap between uh, genuine or authentic architecture? and parametrics let's say maybe yeah okay okay is this close enough Paramet to... parametric i mean parametric parametric architecture is not a new thing you know it's 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 if you look at the baroque architects in rome borromini for example he did parametric architecture i mean parametric this computational architecture where you know it it, it gives you a variety of uh, of forms according to um mathematical equations and uh, yani it, it has been done before it has its history in in you know as far as i know baroque architecture has it and and then you know it it really became very uh, very present with the invention of grasshopper technologies and things like that and uh, there are yeah. tools really there are tools i i don't see them as i don't even see it sometimes as uh, architecture but i see it more as an effect uh, you know as an yeah. effect or at sure. least the way it's being used right now is to create these highly decorated uh, uh, decorative surfaces that envelop buildings and that create forms that are uh, uh, quote unquote new do you see what i'm saying uh, mm -hmm. i i choose not to work with that it doesn't interest me really I, i'm not saying it's bad and I, I, I don't see uh, 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 that, that there is a gap that needs to be filled, you know, because I simply don't, in my work, I don't, I don't use it. I don't see that there is a gap that needs to be filled. Uh, I think what could be interesting with, with, with parametric design is if it, if, it, if it becomes a little bit, if, or if, if, and then some people do it extremely well, Nader Tehrani does it very well. But but because he is also he has this classical education and rigor, you know, and when you have that, basically, you're able to do these things, but in a way that again, at the end of the day, uh, creates a very coherent, cohesive, uh, uh, critical um, architecture, and not just an effect, uh, 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 um, like, uh, uh, a special effect, because the special effect really is skin deep. And it, 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 it falls apart and it becomes, and it has a very short uh, uh, shelf life, and it expires very quickly, it falls out of fashion very quickly. So I think the gap, I think, if, you, if I'm going to answer that, is, is, is through some, a certain rigor and critical way of really looking at architecture, not only as an effect, you know, but as space. And exactly. okay, you, yeah, so. And then if you're going to use parametric design, how does it affect you spatially, right? So there are all of these questions. But personally, personally, I mean, it doesn't really interest me. I, I never really got into it. It's not something that I've, I found a, a calling for, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. um, I can't say much about it, really. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> sorry for interrupting you, but that's that, that opinion is, is uh, for me and you and people who like support uh, heritage and traditional architecture and uh, architecture that inspired from historical architecture that and so on. But for people who see or look at heritage or look at traditional architecture and uh, in comparing it, in comparing uh, with um, contemporary architecture and modern architecture, they look at look at this like black and white. There's no gray zone. So how we can mm -hmm. like architect. 
um, let's say, persuade them that there is a gray zone and we can see or look at uh, architecture that inspired from history uh, as um, you know, a very good or, or an, a very interesting architecture. Well, yeah, and what I can tell you is you sit down and you do your work and you do it very well. And, to the, and this is how people like your work or not. It's not about convincing, you know, I, I mean, I don't see, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's not about how do I convince. Uh, for me, it's about doing the work the way it should be done and defending the work it should be the, the way it should be done and trying as much as possible to complete it and construct it the way I had intended it. And if I can't, and at times I can't, mm -hmm. I ha you have to be flexible enough to come up with solutions that don't kill the idea, but then make the idea different in a different way, but still it has its essence and it has its core. Okay. Mm -hmm. in, in, short, okay. Be, in short, be passionate and true to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, uh, and, and I don't think, I have a very big problem with this, with the whole thing called contemporary architecture. I have a massive problem with this term. I don't understand it. I mean, if somebody can explain it to me, I'd be very happy because, because, in my contemporary world, there is there is there is a lot of, or what's present in my life. I see buildings that are from the 60s, from the 50s, from the 30s, from the 20s, from the 80s, from the 90s. That's all contemporary to me. I see Roman ruins. That's all very contemporary to me as well, because it's 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 the stuff that makes um, today. Uh, and this whole division on contemporary drives me insane because you know um, because clients, certain people learn it and they think contemporary is is being avant garde, you know, and it's being cutting edge, and uh, and it's not. It's as far as away from avant garde that anything. Could. You know, it's not avant-garde at all. It, it, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, David Chipperfield, for example, is, is uh, I think some of his buildings are cutting edge, but they're very dry and they're very repetitive and they're extremely rationalist and classical, fascist at some point, you know. Yeah. So, so, so is he a contemporary architect? <laughs> You are, you know, this is this 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 contemporary thing. It's not, I, you know, I, 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 it, it just is. Uh, it's it, not it's a, something a definition. Have a very you difficult mean. time understanding. Yeah, it's for coffee table magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, Fakhar, you have a question. Um, yeah. Um, it's a follow-up question um, regarding. Uh, there's a there's a question that was asked before. It was about. Uh, there's no um, a pattern in the characteristics of your buildings. Uh, do you remember that question? That there's no specific uh, a way to ca to categorize your designs. From, no, from... there is. I said it. I talked about it. Yeah. So I, 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 uh, I, my comment is is that indeed. <laughs> yeah. Could tell you. Tell me. Okay. Yeah. So what my comment is that um, I found a, a subtle uh, a, a pattern between these uh, buildings that. Each of these buildings like aren't um, experienced fully from a single angle. It's experienced through actually living in the place, uh, looking at places from certain angles. And I want you to comment on the part where there's al always in your buildings there's a um, there's a thin line between um, having this subtle experience in a building and uh, this virtual dimension in the space. Wallahi, it's a very good question, I have to uh, tell you, because it is true. Um, the, the, the experience, Anna bin Ili, things unfold as you go through the space. So it's not, it's, 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 it's something that, Allah, in all of the buildings, you can draw patterns. There is the issue of centrality, there is the issue of material weight, there is the issue of uh, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, the reduction of expression, there's an issue of uh, suspension, yani fee commonalities that you can draw from typology, typological, uh, he in the, a lot of things that are in common. The forms may be very surprisingly difficult, different. You're right. Maybe that's for some people, it, you know, it may appear in, uh, uh, in Numafi a, 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 a lineage between them all, but they do have it, you know. Uh, 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 um, but um, but the, the question, what your question is interesting, you know, and no, uh, uh, to say there is a spiritual act, uh, 
part, I really don't know. You know, I really don't know. But, but what I really truly believe is that the, the, the purpose of architecture is to up, uplift people who are using it, is to really improve their lives, is to make them feel good. It's to create the emotions of, uh, of, 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 uh, uh, of contentment, of, of being, uh, 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 of well-being. That's the ultimate uh, uh, um, 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 objective, I think. And, um, and it's not really magazines, as Dr. Yasser said, or, you know, or fame, or, you know, or not, all of that really is, is, is kind of, it's the garnish to, to, to the main. The main dish is what it actually is meant to serve, who it's actually meant to serve, and how long does it live? And how, how much is it, is it, is it, uh, 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 um, uh, how, how, what kind of role does it play in the lives of people? So if you want to call that spiritual, then maybe it is, because that part affects the spirit of, of people in the building um, or in the structure. Um, and as you said, yes, the experience is not a, com a complete, it's not, it doesn't come to you in, 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 in one go, you know, it reveals itself slowly, you know, and it reveals and it begs also this idea of revealing itself. And it's never conclusive, right? It's never, uh, 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 it has these moments, but these moments are inconclusive in a way, you know. It, you come in and then it is a moment, but then it's, it's followed by heck neutrality and then there is another moment. And then, and, and so uh, there isn't this kind of climactic, uh, uh, thing or the cherry on top of the cake in each thing I, I i don't do that and by naturally i don't do that so um um it is about the movement in space and time basically how do you move in space and time and how with time it changes you know the time of day the year the etc the light how it changes so so i think this is this is what the work really gives maybe um, I'm not sure because in the last question, there is a thin line, but I didn't understand it because uh, the, the, the audio is not very clear. You said there's a thin line between something and another. Um, yeah, what I meant is that there's a thin line between uh, being subtle and creating um, a spiritual um, combination of these, everything that you, that you said about. So, yeah, that was my yeah, comment. I, I, yeah, yeah, and yes, I, I guess so, but you know, if I wake up uh, in the morning and since to say today, today I'm going to do something spiritual, you, you bet a dime to a dollar that it's not going to happen. It doesn't work this way. I think yeah. it's, it's really, it's really yeah. about asking yourself the question, what does this serve? If I do this move, this massive move in a building and make this cantilever, is it so people can see it? Or is it to, 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 when you stand next to it, you just want to keep on sitting because the air is circulating and the light is coming through here and the, the garden is moving in one direction or the la la la. You know, it, it, it's the nature of question and it's the intent. It's the intent. It's, it's, it's really the intent of what you're trying to do. It's the intention. And this is sometimes gets gets really mistaken in my in my work. You know, they think you know I uh, 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 and honestly, what I'm trying to do is to have and I do houses is to 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 have people uh, uh, connect to where they live, really connect and love where they live. And so far, uh, I thank God that it's you know the the results of what I'm getting from from my clients is that, and I think. If you manage to do that, you have something successful. It's enough. Is this uh, a good answer? <laughs> I, I, I think I think it's a good answer. And but uh, you know uh, what's so interesting about this question? It cannot be really, really be fully answered. This is mm -hmm. uh, the the idea that you know we architects we always have impure intentions, no matter how we are well intended. Come on, come on. We do. Uh, we have the, the, uh, and this, this is this is a reality of the human condition. Yani. You cannot defy your ego when your ego is uh, always in control. No, ego is in control. Ego is yeah. in control. And the ego is yeah. in control. Yeah. Does, does 
it's it's where the ego uh, it's it's really the intention if 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 some people say if i succeed to make this into like the most incredibly shocking building where people are going to be shocked this yeah, is one it. way and then yeah. there's the other way which which uh, what i try to do is is like if i'm successful in making this super uplifting and that's also ego, ego, egotistic yeah. you know because i made something uh, yeah. but it's the nature of the question that's what i'm trying to say i, I exactly. i'm not without ego of course i am you know Oh, well, this is uh, and and you know this is the story of uh, us, you know, architects who and it's, we are also in quest uh, to di- to transcend our ego, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we know it's um, uh, difficult and so maybe it's even impossible. But you know, it is impossible. The, 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 the trip is worth it. The the, the hardship is worth it. Is, is, yeah. Is worth it. But I think I think uh, I I really agree with what you're saying. But I think also the trick is in the question. Yeah. The the trick is in the intent. Yani, what is the intent? Arif? Is the intent in you know, it becomes the most famous building in the world, or if the intent is that it it really creates this uh, magical mo- it creates this magic for the people or who who the visitor or whoever sees it. Uh, you know, so, so, sometimes it's even uh, it's being being uh, defeated by reality is what makes it um, uh, spiritual. That you know we, so we yes. are, Exactly. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you know we have you know this big ego and want to do this and we think it's spiritual ironically and yet can it can only become spiritual once you submit to the pressure uh, that are beyond your control mm. Mm. It, but that is actually that's a very interesting topic you're talking about because mm-hmm. there is a process okay mm-hmm. where where you start to fight with the project you know the the project your own work starts to fight you back you're trying to make it something yeah yeah and yeah, then yeah. the the realization when you say why am i trying to force it to do this it doesn't want to do this the minute you do this the magic happens uh, and uh, and really some t- most of the time this happens when you go back to your first sketch you discover that yeah. it was it was, I, all, I, it was all there it was all there i cannot it's i cannot agree more I cannot agree more. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sahil, uh, and I, there's a moment, uh, maybe we can end it with a, uh, with a story. We began with a story, uh, a shared story. Maybe I can end it with a story that shows me really how genuine you are in um, your struggle really to defy the ego in your, in your work. And, and I think you are, uh, yani it's, it's an inspiring uh, uh, insight about you. Uh, I, I remember you once called me um, uh, when you had an exhibition uh, under the patronage of uh, in, in Dar Dar el Funun, uh, yes. under, under the patronage of of uh, His Royal Highness Prince Hassan, mm-hmm. and you told me, uh, yes, sir, and I, I want you to be the, uh, to be with me there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why you told me, no, I I feel uh, I'm a fraud. So do, why do you feel so? You said, you said because I don't feel that I own any of these works. That are under my name. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It the feeling is still, is still, yeah. is still here, it, and it's an interesting feeling because the minute it's it's done, you look at it like a stranger, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you stack it. You tell me, I explain it to you, but I mean, I look at it. It's it's uh, you, you 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 let go of it, and it's it is it's done, and um, and that's that, you know, and uh, and then. What you're working in was what's being born at the moment becomes the most important thing for you, right? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, and I can speak on behalf of everyone, Sahil, that was really um, a fitting end of Shaban uh, and uh, uh, beginning of Ramadan. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it was indeed, I really enjoyed the, the, the conversation and I hope. Yeah, and you, with the few drawings I have, I didn't have enough plans maybe to show everything in detail, and I hope it was. Uh, I, 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 th- I think I think thanks to that, thanks to that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is, we are talking we are talking here about ego. Uh, you know, this is where you know this higher calling filled in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope to. Um, to be able to do more of these talks and you know to engage more inshallah and uh, 
thank you so much for this uh, generous invitation. I'm very honored to have presented my work. Really, I haven't um, uh, done it here in a, in a long time, and it's I think uh, it's time to kind of uh, do that. And uh, hopefully, we do another one, maybe of different works, or you know, or as as mentioned, uh, the. We will do it. Seminar and you agree that it will be to the memory of Ali Maher because I believe. Inshallah, yes, of course. I want to. Absolutely. Actually, Professor Naif, I talked to Sahel earlier about our design studio, which was. Oh, oh, oh! Yes, it's good to. Yeah, 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 bravo. And and 